Hello, this is David. This is Cameron. This is Tony. And this is an episode of The Commentators. And unfortunately, Nathan isn't here this He's time fired. around. He's still fired. But we've got, we don't have Bob the Clown, but we've got the creator of Bob the Clown. Tony, where can we see some of the crazy episodes of Bob the Clown in and films and such? And other shorts. Uh, I would go to my website at TonyCliffordFilms.com. Got all the Bob the Clown episodes up there, along with uh, my other stuff and some other stuff that Nathan actually is in us also. Unfortunately, yeah, you, were, you did re- like last week. You were filming something with him, right? Yep, we did a short together. It was lo- long and painful. Literally, just well, myself and him. That's that's how every experience with Nathan is long, and painful. I don't love. <laughs> and speaking of long and painful, this time we are going to be watching. Then what was the 1980 release? Is it 19? I thought it was 81, 82. I, I thought it was actually 80. I thought it was 79. Oh, it was the 80s. Of Flash Gordon, um, and it has a connection to last week's film, Blue Velvet, because it is produced by Dino De Laurentiis, uh-huh. who wanted to make this movie. In fact, when he originally wanted to do it, he wanted Federico Fellini to make Flash Gordon. Yeah. And um, also in a um, in a uh, kind of a weird thing that's kind of uh, topical for this week, the new Star Wars trailer came out, yep. and Flash Gordon was the character that George Lucas originally wanted to get like the license for yep. before he said before he couldn't get it and said, "I'll make my own." Wait. Ah. And uh, was was this the first time that a, a rock band or anything like that had done the entire soundtrack? And also helped in the composition of the music. You mean original music? Or yeah, just... original music. Because it can't they... be at first. I, for some reason, I, I... It's got to be up there. What about, yeah. what, about, what about Suspiria? Suspiria. Remember Goblin? The band Goblin? Italian band Goblin? No? No, I know what you're talking about, yeah. but... I mean, like, not only providing the songs, like, but um, because the Goblin, if I remember, they... Not to lessen the uh, contribution of the score, but they only did the score. Yeah. But a Queen, in case you don't know, this is Queen. If you don't know who Queen is, I suggest you, you know, come out of learn. Your, come out of your cave. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Queen not only did, you know, help with the composition, but they also um, wrote all the songs. Yeah. So that would show it. Woo! And this, of course, would be their, the Queen's first time doing this. Mm-hmm. The, only, the other time they did it was with uh, Highlander. Now, can I just point out another Star Wars related thing? Yeah. Was Max that? von Sydow yep. in this? Mm-hmm. Yep. As, what's his name? Ming? Emperor Ming? Mm-hmm. Ming, yep. Ming, Ming the, the Merciless. Merciless. Who also should probably have been in Iron Man 3. <laughs> because that's pretty much the same character. Yeah. The way they look. Oh, and another. To, the and, and there's another Star Wars reference. Uh, the cinematographer on the film is Gilbert Taylor, who also shot Hard Day's Night and Doctor Strange Love. He filmed Star Wars. The very first Star Wars now, film. If, and in case anybody has never seen Flash Gordon before, the film is very campy, and it was and yes. it's totally meant to be that way. I mean, it's we're a, looking at comic book yeah. images right now. And things flashing by, and a very fu- a very fun Queen. There they are, yes, Queen, Queen song. And um, performed. It's, they're in it. <laughs> it's one hundred percent. It's one hundred percent. You know, intentional because you know Lorenzo what? Semple yeah. Jr. Uh, it was meant to. You know, be that way because we're still in the era where, you know, we remember this the '66 Batman, and if you hate the '66 Batman, I never want to speak to you. Uh oh. <laughs> There's also another Star <laughs> Wars thing here I'm with hot Timothy hell. Dalton because Timothy Dalton was James Bond, and Steven Spielberg always wanted to do James Bond, and Steven Spielberg is friends with George Lucas, who did Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's another one. Okay. Brian Blessed was in this, and he's in Star Wars: The Phantom Menace as Boss Nass. We don't talk about yeah. it. And there's another Star Wars okay, reference well, because there is hail, okay. like in that one sequence in Return of the Wait, Jedi. Can, this this is something that's always always got me. I know it's you know not necessarily supposed to be taken on 100 seriously because yeah. of the camp, but what the fuck is hot hail? Uh, very hot. It's, well, it's like, sort what's of like it made of. I do not know. It's sort of like, you know, like out here. Dry ice. Yeah, like, you know how sometimes it's like killer hail will appear just out of nowhere? Like, when it's supposed to rain? Maybe that's what it's supposed to reference to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, and I remember her, because Brian Blessed tells a story about he would grab her ass and stick his finger up her asshole. What? Throughout the making of it. Okay, are you sure you're talking about Brian Blessed and not JBL and The Miz? Brian Blessed, as he described it, he's like, straight up the ass. I bet she loved that. He wanted to shag her like mad. I'll pet you. But there was always that bloody husband. 
And for some reason, whenever I see uh, that character, her name escapes me, but I know the character she's playing, Dale Arden. Whenever she's in this movie, it looks like... That's it, Dale Arden. Yeah. No, the, no, I know the character's yeah. name, but I don't know the actress's name. Oh, don't worry, I don't know any of the yeah. actors. Except for the uh, main actor, uh, J- Sam J. Jones, as Flash yeah. Gordon. But um, this came out, obviously, after Superman, the movie. Yeah. And in a way, this might be... That's part- hot hail. And uh, and uh, so just this could like could you know this yeah. obviously could be some way to cash in on Superman the movie's huge success, and visually it looks like she's wearing some of Lois Lane's clothes <laughs> from uh, Superman okay, the movie. Puppy. Who's a little poopy puppy? Oh no, I've, I've got Lister here. Who's a little poopy puppy? Of here's one other thing. Now do you know have you seen some of the Flash Gordon serials? Right. Yeah. I remember seeing. Uh, I think it was Flash Gordon conquers the universe. Okay. Do you know how they opened? Uh, with the, the episodes with the crawl, yeah. right? Now, if they did, oh, wait, you mean like like in Star Wars, right? But here's the thing: I was gonna propose. Do you think the reason why they didn't do that was because a lot of folks would watch the movie and go, "This is a rip off of Star Wars." I think it's a good shot that, that that's what happened. But also, if you think, if you really think about it, I don't know if that kind of crawl would work with the tone that this movie has. Oh, and I want to point out, take a look at Flash's shirt. It's He bested Hot Rod. You shut your damn mouth. He you did. watch your mouth. It's true. Okay, if you, the, you, are you honestly saying that shirt is better than the Hot Rod shirt? No, no. I'm then, just but, saying then, he beat be, be Piper. She does then, look like Lois No, Lee. you said bested, <laughs> which, which, imp, which implies it looks better. Mm-hmm. Take note, Amy Adams. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. He's a member of the Jets. Did the Jets have white and red back then? Is there... No, but that might be his own personal color. White and red? Because I, I think that just goes goes back to the actual Flash Gordon comic strip character where red was his main primary yeah. color. And just going back to any character named Flash in, bo- in comics, aside from uh, Peter Parker's high school bully, they've all, like, the, you know, the superheroes, the Flash, they've all been associated with the colors red and yellow. And speaking of red... Gal- it's Galactus. <laughs> no, that's just a cloud. Oh. Speaking of Lois Lane, you know they search the world to find a guy who just looks like Superman who can play him. They go all the way to England and they get Henry Cavill, and then they're like, "Okay, well we need Lois Lane too. Uh, who do we got? Amy Adams? Okay, we'll take her." You know, it, it just look. I don't know. I just don't see Amy Adams as a Lois I, Lane. I, th- I think Amy Adams did uh, did a good job, but are there actors I would have rather seen? Yeah, seen exactly. Of, of course there are. I mean, yeah. it's, it's nothing against her as an actress, because I've seen her and stuff. I love her. I just don't consider her, like, a Lois Lane. Like, I don't know, maybe it's the same problem, like, how people with Daniel Craig, they were like, oh... He doesn't look like James Bond, but you know he I rem- proved it. Yeah. I remember uh, when uh, it was for, he was first announced as James Bond. I uh, made a spelling pun where you know it's one of those uh, puns where it sounds James exactly Bond. the same, yeah. but it's just spelled different. So it said, "What do you expect me to do? Do Goldfinger? Do you expect me to talk? No, Mister Blonde. I expect you to die." <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And there's another Star Wars connection because is that not William Hootkins back there who played Jack Porkins? Named oh my because gosh, he was Porkins. fat. Are you serious? That's I th- Porkins? I think that's Porkins. Yeah. And there's another Star Wars con- Wait, connection because DePaul was a fiddler on the roof. And as you know, he was dancing around in the background of Dagobah. Wait, we, we, we might get a close one. Let's see if that's Porkins. That's Porkins. Oh Porkins. my god. I'm coming but, in too far. But just to be clear, I thought I think Daniel Craig's a great Bond. Oh yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. but I also but, remember the freak out that people had when they yeah. cast him. Oh, because you, oh, you, it, it was it was it as bad as a freak out when they announced Affleck as Batman. Oh, do yeah. you remember when Sean Clark bitched about it? He's like, yeah, he looks like an ugly Kirk Douglas. Ben Affleck? No, uh, uh, Daniel Craig. Oh, Clark he's, bitches about everything though. He's he's. Uh, Complaining the other day about Star Wars Episode Seven or the like, which which does he not have to look forward to like more Star Wars Episode Seven or the presidential election? And I'm just kind of like, oh man, that's that's like, you was I, I, how can you hate Star Wars? I don't know. Yeah, and it's so easy to do this. How about this? You sit in your butt, you don't go see the movie. You don't like the election, you don't like the candidates, you don't vote. Yeah, but yeah, sit on just... your butt and do nothing. Yeah. Easiest thing in the world. I mean, that's the thing about being fi- like friends with so many filmmaking people, though, is that like there you have very, very specific tastes sometimes. And but it's also something that's horrible in the end. Is like nobody wants to give anything a chance, especially if they've 
seen something that's that's good that's good about the movie, but they don't want to acknowledge it. I mean, there are some movies oh, coming out. There's some movies coming out that I absolutely don't want to see. Like you cannot drag me to see the Fantastic Four movie, uh-huh. but that's because and I'll, every single thing I've seen, every single interview I've read, every bit of information that's come out about it, there's been yeah. nothing I like. Yeah, I, the, exactly. The tra- I mean, the if trailer, I heard good things, I'd, yeah, I'd give it a chance. I'd be curious. Like well, if somebody said, movie. "Oh, it was really good," that I like, yeah. you know, I would go see it. But it's it's in, just a money grab. I feel like. Yeah, it's, it was 100% done so Fox could keep the rights. Keep the rights, yeah. And then they'll probably try to negotiate with, like, Marvel and Disney yeah. in, like, four or five years when they try to have, like, a Avengers meet everybody else and everything. So. And, it's, and it's, you know, just like, you know, I can understand people being wary of uh, Man of Steel, but, yeah. just, <laughs> but just, you know, of uh, Batman versus Superman, for example. But... I see enough stuff there that I like to give it a chance. Then, of course, I'm, all, I'm also obviously biased since I loved Man of Steel. Yeah, I like Man of Steel too. I mean, a lot of people give that movie a hard time. But... Oh, yeah, the, when we ev- when we eventually do do Man of Steel, it's going to be me and Nathan essentially going yeah. back and forth going, "This movie's awesome. This movie sucks." And, and it's probably going to be you and me, Tony, in the middle. Probably. Yeah. Be if like, you want to be there for the Man of Steel I commentary, know. I really liked Man of Steel. Like, I, I, I mean, that's like the only movie that's ever worked for me where you can get away with like nine eleven imagery and like get emotions out of me that aren't like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this." You know, but like you know, they they get away with it. You know, it's I, that's what I like no. about seeing in like a superhero movie is like stuff you can relate to real life because so many times it's like, oh, we're just walking down in some cowboy bodunk town in Arizona, and uh, this is where a galactic battle happens. No, see, see, that's what always bugs me, especially right now with like all the buzzwords of grounded in realism. You wonder what grounded in realism means? <laughs> it just means like you know, um, let's make everyone angry and dark. Yeah. Well, I, what I, just... I what, to me, what have, what <laughs> always has mattered as far as relatability goes, is is the emotion real? Yeah. Let oh, me absolutely. Like, like um, in this movie, it's goofy and, and as hell. But the reason that people can come back to it and watch it is, that on some level, you can kind of grab on to Flash. And it's also fun. It's That's also a lot thing. of fun. And it's colorful. But, and I, and I hate to keep bringing it up again, but you know, like in S- Star Wars. Luke's relatable because, yes, technically he's an alien because, you know, he's not from Earth, so he's an alien who lives on an all-desert planet who has ma- who has magic powers, but he's a kid. He's like, I don't want to, I'm stuck here. I don't want to be here anymore. How do I get out of this? Yeah, he's a farm boy who has the yeah. chance to be more. Oi, I found the perfect man. You yeah. get your ass on the rocket, though. Yeah, you know, it's the thing about movies is that... You know, people get, like, the more you watch movies, the mm-hmm. more tainted you become with your taste. True. And that's why critics will tear a movie to shreds, but really, it's, every movie serves a purpose exactly. or, for somebody or yes. something. You don't have to like every movie. and. Mm-hmm. Critics think that everything is like supposed to be exactly an improvement. It, or what you was this before? This this was after Fiddler, right? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, but I'm just wondering because for some reason he looked younger here. Well, because they aged him. Because uh, when he okay. did Fiddler, he was like only in his. 30s. He was only twelve. When he's he did twelve. Fiddler. Yeah, that was an amazing makeup job. Which was also another connection because he's actually Anakin Skywalker in Episode One. Actually, I, I would not. I'm have the been. best actor. Oh, yippee! Want to see my father? And just to point out, we've also already seen more real sets than in all of the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> Although I think yeah. that one just bobbled a little bit there. The, the one thing I do want to point, coming back to what you're talking about, Tony, when it comes to the critics, is the one thing is what I always do whenever I see a film. I always make certain that I put it in the proper context, and that is the goals of this movie are going to be different than the goals of, let's see, what was released in 1980, uh, Raging Bull. It's different than that. Yeah. And they're both... They are both, you know, people can say, oh, they're great or bad or what have you in their own ways. And they both, for me, they both work in their own ways. One is a very serious film about this man dealing with his brother and his wife and he can't trust either of them. And you got this one, which is a goofy, campy, silly film. And that's, and it's fun. Now, um, with this movie, obviously it's adapted from the um, comic strip created by Alex Raymond. Yes. And um, they did, obviously, and this brings up a good uh, uh, example of adaptation where you have to kind of change some things as much as some of you hardcore fans of fucking everything hate to admit and sometimes you need to change things. Yes. Because uh, as um, it's been mentioned earlier Flash Gordon in this movie is a football player for the Jets. The classic version of Flash Gordon from the comic strips is actually a polo player. 
That wouldn't work. And that wouldn't work. Because the audiences today would go, what the fuck is polo? Well, and only that, but pol- if you do know what polo is, it's, so it's also posh. got... posh. It's, yeah, it's posh. It's more upper class. It's more stiff upper lip. It's, it's not as it relatable. Would be, it would be a game that Bruce Wayne would play over Clark Kent. So do you think... And so oh. making him a football player makes him more relatable because you know what football is. And also, I want to point out, when I picked this film, um, I was not aware that this week that they were going to announce that they're going to make a Flash Gordon film directed by Matthew Fawn, who did Layer Cake, X-Men, uh, First Class, and a really, really sleeper hit. Yeah, Kingsman, The Secret Service. Do you think that when they do that, that they're going to do something similar where they're going to make him a, foot, a football star, but this case, you know, soccer or football, do you think? Or do you think they'll go back to Paul... To Polo, yeah, make would, him I, British. I I think well, in the original one he wasn't British. Well, I don't know. Well, like, I'm just assuming because thought, Matthew Fawn is British. So, I I if I were them, I'd keep it football because I know right now there'd be such a huge temptation to make him into some mo- modern uh, big time you know athlete, like making him a MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. Which would be like, well, which you can all already see the press junkie that did like, our Flash is a little bit more believable. He's like an MMA fight. He's ready to fight, ready to take people down. What's nice about Flash Gordon, though, for Matthew Vaughn, though, is like, he just had that hit, so he can do basically whatever he wants. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's not just that, but Flash is one of, Flash Gordon is one of those things where it's like, yes, there's like a fan base, but they're not like, they're not like a rabid wild pack no. of animals like some of these bigger franchises. Yeah. So you can get away with changing so much, and like you, you can basically reboot this whole thing. Yeah, you know, like, it's weird what has strong fan bases and what doesn't. Like, I like I Flash mean, you, Gordon, you could but cast a black Flash Gordon, and yeah. people would be okay with it. You know, it's not like where people are gonna freak out, like where they go and start start talking about Idris Elba. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's that, like all yeah. freak out. You know, uh, the people who sub- uh, I have no problem with the idea of Idris Elba as uh, James Bond. I don't but, either. Uh, but the, the term, but from here, what I, I understand, yeah. like the people who like were really uh, rabid about him doing it, like, oh my god, Idris Elba is a badass as James Bond, which I agree with. But apparently, that like fervor, like was was so extreme where people w- actually wanted him to do it that actually, according to him, if, unless I misread the interview, kind of turned Eon Productions off of picking him. Yeah, well, I heard that <laughs> Idris Elba actually um, got turned off by all of it, too, like, yeah. once, once he saw that. Um, and I think he got, didn't he say he got more turned off by the people who wanted him to do it? The, uh, hmm. maybe, I don't know, I, I read the headline, I didn't click the article. <laughs> oh. Maybe they'll just get Chiwetel Ejiofor to do it. And you know what? I honestly, th- and Idris Elba was in good shape, but who knows when Daniel Craig's gonna leave? Yeah, yeah well, I think he's, he's actually got one more film, right? He's, it's gonna be he's this been and another. Saying he wanted to leave after the first movie, so I, I don't I, like. I, I I think there's a lot of stuff. There's always been stuff going on with like the producers of James Bond. There's a great documentary about it. Um, what Sean Connery having falling out with some of them. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I, saw, Sean Con- like, like, yeah, I watched that and I, I, like, I just go, uh, oh, there's yeah. a little bit of respect for Sean Connery, but at the same time, you know, there's stuff going around. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. talk about um, Sean Connery and James Bond a lot when we actually uh, get to one of the movies. Yeah. There's one that I have in mind that I really want to talk about that involves Sean Connery without him being in the movie. Hmm. But uh, I like you, you, these the are really costumes. good costumes. That yes. I mean, you know, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm I don't know why, just in my mind, just popped up, you know, uh, Kaji Musha, mm-hmm. the the Kirikuro Sala film, which was released this, the same year. You know, the use of color, the, the design of the costumes. Love the red. The use yeah. of red in this movie is great. <laughs> that wasn't very calm. Hi, right, come in peace. <laughs> Doink. That's just the way that they guy say must hi. be a cop or something. <laughs> Drop now, it. Now, Joel Schumacher, this is how you do a proper campy film that's colorful and fun and silly. Well, you, look, okay, if you're watching a Flash Gordon movie, you have to know you're watching a Flash Gordon movie. I feel like some of the things that people pigeonhole themselves into as viewers nowadays, maybe it's because they've seen so many movies or we've grown up with them and it's getting worse and worse because now it's like we have literally things we can zap into our like playstations and watch unlimited amounts of movies but people I, like i saw a post the other day a 50 comment thread those are always lovely but like, <laughs> yeah. you know complaining about how they're just not making movies basically like they used to and it's like oh god okay you have to understand that the studios are in the business of making money and yes, just because you do, like it's cyclical like the superhero thing will die out yeah. For like in probably the next decade, and then it'll be replaced by something sci-fi or 
you know... Or it'll, like, morph yeah. into something I else. mean, like, like, think about it. Like, when was the last time you saw, like, a pretty woman type movie? Like, they just don't make them anymore. You know, oh, not Lizard it, Man. And they, they, they change... It's all cyclical. They don't make those crime drama movies anymore unless you're David Fincher, you know? And it, it's... You, one of the things that I have to say to people is if you're going to complain about a movie before you even see it, don't see it. Like, you you should know that you're not the demographic for that movie. Exactly, well, like what Clark was doing, right? And what, what, also, well, what, I mean, he, what, what also gets me is like when uh, people try to bring something back but, but decide to jam it into um, what's popular today instead of going, okay... Um, Maybe we shouldn't do this. <laughs> it's like, I, I, like what's like what's an example? The correct or wrong is are these the costumes for your new short, Tony? <laughs> Actually, wish. that's what Nathan normally wears. Oh, I those, think those are uh, badass. Okay, well, I would wear that just like hanging around my house. Brian Blessed. Well, I think one of the examples is like golden swords. Why don't they have more of those? Those are amazing. Or or dwarves in colorful foil. Well, I, th I think one example is kind of uh, from TV right now. I mean, as much as I kind of like the second season of it, it's like they're trying to jam um, the arrow into this dark, brooding Batman thing. Yeah, they're trying... It, like Where... He's, like, such a lighthearted character in the comics, you know? Yeah, it's like, and he has his dark moments. Yeah. But he... He's just... <laughs> he, he prances around looking like Robin Hood. How seriously can you take him, you know? And it's like... That, I mean, it's it's they've created their own Arrow verse at this point, and I like, you know what the sad thing, ab oh, oh. the sad thing about it is, um, like you look at a show like Daredevil, and you realize yeah, that Daredevil that can Nails. coexist in like the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe, yeah. and it's like they just, it's almost like DC just decided okay. to like, I don't know, see, crap on their own product. Okay. See, know? He, here's the here's the thing that and it's, that's always been an issue with DC. Here's the thing: if do you think if Marvel had access to the X Men that Wolverine would not be in the Avengers? Oh, he would absolutely be yeah. in the Avengers. If do you think if, if Marvel had access to all their characters from the, from the beginning that we wouldn't see something like I don't know Doctor Doom facing the Avengers? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if they're willing to talk to another yeah. studio to try to get Spider Man. They would take yeah. everything, you know. They, so, so, so Marvel oh my God, uses that mustache. Marvel yeah. sees no Marvel sees absolutely no reason to not include as many of their characters as they can in the same universe, while not necessarily having them interact. There, there's no reason to have Daredevil meet Iron Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now at all, because they don't run in the same circles at all. There would be no reason that you would see Tony Stark try to take down uh, the Kingpin. Exactly. I mean, Just, yeah, it, because I mean, it's not. It's that's like it's like trying to like kill an ant with a bazooka. You know, you're gonna do more harm to yourself. It's it, it's a two different. Well, it's 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 like playing baseball and football. They're two different yeah, games. Yeah, and know? and again, Daredevil uh, does it perfectly because um, this isn't a spoiler as far as I'm concerned, but it it directly deals with what happened in Avengers by. <clears throat> I'm not saying like, oh my god, look at all this stuff. What happened in the Avengers is essentially one of the main things that leads into everything that happens in Daredevil. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not that difficult to, like, tie that in. Because it's, yeah. like, basically they're like, okay, we have Daredevil. We want to make it a kind of a gritty crime movie yeah. with a, a little bit of lawyer in it, lawyer stuff in it. Okay, oh, well, we have this stuff that happened with uh, Marvel and uh, the Avengers, and that was great, so how do we incorporate that? Oh, well, maybe now that, like, New York's been, like, evacuated, there can be, like, a power gap. Who's that? Oh, boom. It... Correct me if I'm wrong, but is he not in Raiders of the Lost Ark and also in Harry Potter? Who? Him. Wasn't he the captain and wasn't he one of the wizards in the Order of the Phoenix? I, I wouldn't know anything from Harry Potter. No. It looks like him. I think not a Star Wars connection, but ladies and gentlemen, we do have an Indiana Jones and a Harry Potter connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he's dead. <laughs> and and, and, this, and when I saw them mention I the Avengers on Daredevil, I that just came to me as a cross as proof. There was no reason that you know second season of Arrow you would you can have an offhand comment about what happened in Metropolis. Oh, absolutely. The, I think the only issue that I know I would be hard pressed to solve 
What, is that Max von Sydow? Like, yeah, Max von Sydow. does not look like Max von Sydow in this movie. The makeup's hilarious. I mean, Max von Sydow is just having the time of his life. And I love this one tweet. that there yes, his eyes. Yes, Max yeah. von Sydow, a man in his 80s, does have a Twitter account. Yes, and he's he's hilarious. The Ming is a psycho. <laughs> oh, no. But he they asked him. They, some guy was like, hey, there's a new Star Wars trailer out. What about your role in it? Are you going to be merciless? And then he goes, I don't know, but... Out more information will be coming soon. I jest. So yeah, I love Max von Sydow. Oh my goodness! Was that, <laughs> I I just st- oh. It was oh, the, oh, the uh, uh, oh yeah the Arrow universe. The hard pressed to explain. You'd be really hard pressed to keep up the quality. Like you know, if you watch, you've watched the show Daredevil, and you can see the quality. I'm difference. currently I've only seen right two now. episodes, and there's just a vast difference it's they it's they're hmm. making a 13 episode thing versus like a 23 yeah. or 26 episode and i season. think 13 episodes is usually a smarter way to go you know yeah it's it's um less filler yeah it's le- it's less filler you know it's less <laughs> rut it's less rushed and it's higher quality you know it's like you can take the time to do things you're not burning your actors out i always i, I follow Stephen amell the guy who plays oliver queen mm-hmm. on facebook and he's great with um he's huge online um, great with fans, but he's always burnt out by the end of a season. I think we may have another Star Wars connection here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. The dwarf that's following her, is that Deep Roy? I don't know. And he himself was, I believe, I he played, Dro- did he play Droopy McCool in Return of the Jedi? I have no idea. He was also the the man with the racing snail in uh, uh, <laughs> Nether Ending Story. He was also the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and Chocolate Factory. He's a really good... It, it's weird that um, for some reason Max von Sydow in this reminds me a lot of uh, Gene Hackman's Luthor in a Superman because even though he's kind of goofy, he says lines that are terrifying if you really think about them. Like, um, "Why would you attack our world? Why not?" That's terrifying. Why would you kill all these people? Why not? Except in this movie, the silliness fits because of the tone of the movie. Hackman's Luther is silly and it doesn't fit that movie at all. And then, and then Mark May will show up and be like, hey! We, they, hey, there's, there are a couple lines in there where where um, Hackman's Luther is absolutely terrifying. The one where um, he's speaking on the, over the frequency of the Superman and, he is, and he's kind of giggling over all the trouble he's causing. How do you tell an actress to act like this? I've always wondered, like, okay, how do you um, get them to do these silly um, things? Imagine you're touching an orgasm. And then I just imagine Brian Blessing in the background going, I'm going to grab Look at his ass. Look at him, Maximus, and I was like, Err. Oh my god, Ming's got the Schwartz. Dude, that guy looks like one of the guys out of uh, looks like like, a Death Eater. I was going to say, he looks like Dr. Doom. Which that's I like. The, yeah, that's probably... That, that's one of the things... Uh, if I remember right, that's how the character looks in the comic strips. I could easily be wrong. But that might be where uh, Jack Kirby got the uh, initial uh, inspiration to draw Doctor you know, Doom. You know, actually, there's one thing I have to say. When it comes to the art direction of this film, it does remind me a lot of Jack Kirby's <laughs> illustrations. Easter eggs! You know what? I'm going to get a shirt that says Tony on it that's really skin tight. Well, is it gonna be in those? Is it gonna be in that font? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't want a lightning bolt on it. I don't know what I'll put. A on clover? It. Oh, you know what? That might just be it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an action sequence. It looks like an episode of Arrow. <laughs> oh, the f- that's another thing. The fight choreography on Daredevil is so much better. Um. Oh well, yeah, but that, I mean, like, how can you, you, they have to shoot shows every week? It's insane. Uh-oh. Like, it's like doing a forty-eight hour, but every week. You know, it's, you're gonna get tired. You're not gonna get the same, the same kind of quality out of people. You have to get only people oh, that are geez. really based in Toronto. That's I love this. Now, did I now did I make the real cheap joke and say it's a oh jeez and say it's a San Francisco bar fight? Yeah, I'll make that joke. But you kind of did while uh, you were asking. Uh, I get it. Uh, I was losing. Uh, I, was I, I just like how a football is his, is his can of spinach. Yeah. These are like those old games, like Final Fight, right now, like the sound oh, effects, man. like or, or Streets Streets of Rage or something. <laughs> it's like you only. You, uh, you know, I actually wish football was played. Are, are they wearing condoms in the back? <coughs> I would hope so to stay protected. 
You know, oh, when you look at the masks on the soldiers, they look like red Cybermen from like the seventies Doctor Who. That is that, that is so Deep Roy, right? Oopa Loopa from Charlie and Chocolate oh, yeah. Factory. That's Holy shit. That's so him. Yeah, that's definitely him. And that's Riff Raff in the background. So, I'm getting a distinct like Cyberman. Oh, vibe. They're not wearing any clothes. Oh my. <laughs> you know what's funny is like. I, this guy has to stand in a room with these people who are getting paid like a hundred dollars a day, you know, and like they're just dressed up in these weird clothes, and this guy's being like playing this pretty seriously. Mm. And well, I think that's why it works though. Oh no, it totally yeah. does. It totally does. But it's just it's got to be like always interesting. Like yeah. you know, you're like this car- this guy, and you're da-da, getting paid da-da. a lot of money, and they're all dressed yeah. in these weird clothing, mm. and you're basically a football player. It's it's why this it's why the, this works more like the '60s Batman works because in the '60s Batman they're all taking it seriously. It's just the world is absurd. Yeah. Ooh. And that in theft you all. Yeah. Whoa. But uh, that's why you know the Schumacher Ooh. films don't work because everyone's acting like it is a joke. Yeah. And it also doesn't work because there are just moments where it takes itself way too seriously. Exactly. exactly. Well, yeah, although I mean, although there card. is one thing that there's <laughs> then more, Alfred's dying. <laughs> there there are two things that work in both of uh, Schumacher movies like, over. The Alfred's whole dying. I must pay his bills with my bad credit card. There are two things that work over the whole of Schumacher's two movies. Beginning but of the end. sadly, they're both. <laughs> but sadly, they're both in Batman Forever. Okay. The vehicle designs in Batman Forever, mm-hmm. I will all I, I love. Yeah. And secondly, really like those, yeah. Nicole Kidman. Oh, Nicole Kidman She's was gorgeous. Gorg- in that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had that. I had her poster when I was a kid. Of is her she even like a bat film. character, or do they just make her up for the movie? The thing is, I, I, her name sounds oh, like she said a swear. <laughs> her name sounds like such a comic book name because if her move in the movie, I remember because it just stands stands out. It's a, it's the Batman. It's the I guess since Bond has Bond girls, I guess they're Bat girls. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's the only thing I can think of. But her name is the one that sticks out the most, even more so than Vicky is it Vale. Chase Meridian, exactly. Yeah. Doctor Chase, Chase Meridian. Meridian. Chase that's, Meridian. That sounds like such a Bond girl name too. Chase Meridian. It just sounds like somebody British. I don't know. Now, don't you have that in your bedroom, Cameron? I don't know. This is, I like, turning parents. into, like, some, uh, what's that video game? It's Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, okay. No, this is good. Oh. I was, what's, that, what's that video game? Silent Hill? Yeah, oh, Silent yeah. Hill. The shift would be, I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like this guy in the mask is a Nazi. No, was you know, when they remake this, they're going to make the guy in that mask into an internet blogger. Oh, God. You know, I don't know how a campy flash would work nowadays. I, see, that's the thing. I, I, think I, I, I don't think it could because there are too many comic fans and superhero fans who are, and not only that, but just movie fans in general who have it in their head that cynicism and darkness equals maturity and quality. What about Guardians of the Galaxy? Kind of follow that Guardians path of the Galaxy of being... Bro- Guardians of the Galaxy broke that trend. But... But, but I think it might just be like maybe a bump in the road because people are just like, everything needs to be dark and angry. Here's... I have a question. Those designs of those guards, does it remind you of the Sniffits? Yeah, from Mario 2. Yeah. The thing with, like, Guardians of the Galaxy is, like, Guardians of the Galaxy is good... But it's very specific. You can't, like, I know a lot of Hollywood executives and stuff have been saying, oh, why can't we make things more like Guardians of the Galaxy where we can get, like, a G rating or, you know, and get, like, or a PG and get, like, so much, so many more people in to see. And it's, it, it's very, very specific. And there are dark moments in that movie. Yeah, oh, there are. But it, it, I, I, it's, it's. It's, it's a good it's a good balance I think. I think when you got like a raccoon who's basically running around swearing, you know, it's like, "Oh haha, you can't take it too seriously." But then even when even that raccoon has like a really sad moment, you're like, "Oh my god." For a talking raccoon, raccoon a talking rodent. But, yeah. but my thing is when I, like I see so many um websites uh, put this thing like, "What do you prefer, dark or light movies?" A, like it's a choice, like you can't have both. And B, the responses are Darker. Nobody wants happy, smiling heroes. Like, oh, jeez. Like, it's like, shut I'm up. I'm almost at the point where I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of like just the the um, twilighting. I guess you could say of so many characters. Like, 
of where it's just them sitting around and feeling bad about themselves. And, <laughs> you know, I get it. Like, you know, even like they're doing it with Batman, but like... Not everyone's Batman. Not everyone is Batman. Like, in Batman, it's like, okay, yeah, he went through some, like, really crazy shit. But, I mean, like, not every person needs to have, like, PTSD or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, if you're going to make something dark and gritty, make the goddamn Punisher. Well, this is a dark know? moment, is it not? Because our hero could die, right? And it still yeah. can't be... Look at that. Look at those undies. Ooh. But, it's like, okay, like, Daredevil, it's... His world is dark and gritty, but he himself doesn't necessarily lose any light. Because he's still kind of hopeful in a way, and he's still when he's around his friends, he kind of smiles. Yeah, I yeah. In I mean, you get the good balance with um, his partner too. Yeah, but it's it just bugs me that you know there's just um there's this great quote by um uh, writer uh, Greg Rucka. He's written a lot of you know Batman stuff. He's I like written, Greg. Yeah. He's done a lot of his uh, own stuff. He's done a lot of crime fiction. He's, oh, they have like Nazi machine guns all of a sudden. But um, but what he said was, if he like I, I'm paraphrasing because I remember the the, oh the quote exactly. Oh my god! How much did he get paid to wear those? Sorry. Not much. They're sexy. Not much. I can understand why Mark Wahlberg loved him so much as a kid. Ooh. Man, times have changed. But, uh, like, if that, this was nowadays, he'd have to like, like, have bulked up like another forty pounds. Oh God, yeah. And if Fanes would be popping on, no, probably be played by The Rock or Hugh Jackman. That was actually one thing when we were watching uh, uh, Days of Future Past the other day. My my wife was kind of getting turned off by Hugh Jackman because he he, he's so he got out of bed, he's got the veins on his veins, and she was like, "Ugh, it's way too much." But um, the the quote was essentially, if you have a problem with um, characters like Superman, Wonder Woman, and Captain America, and can't believe you know in someone just being good for the sake of being good, that's, that's it, yeah. it's like a that's your problem. It speaks more to your own. It speaks more to you than to those characters. Yeah. Cynicism does not equal maturity. You know what'll be a really interesting test? There's that new Supergirl show that's coming. Yeah, and if that is dark and gritty, I think I've just about had it. Had it, like, oh, because no, it, it's, it's the Lana, Lana, um, or no, not what's her Lara, name? Lara, yeah. It's a but her Kryptonian name is Kara Zor-El. Yeah, and if they make her dark, oh, and they gritty, did it. In the, they did it in the comics. She was this angry bitch. No, in the comics the now. best, the best version of her is like the like. The basically teenage ditzy like person who has these same powers as Superman. Yeah, where that's, she, that's what's yeah, interesting. Where, where, where Superman is like the guy who protects the world. She's more of the she's guardian. She's the cheerleader. Who protects well, and not only the world. that, but she's the guardian angel of her friends. Like that's kind of what she, that's one of her theme. Superman saves everyone, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not the, like fartling for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that would just make, that congratulations, would just, Brian. That would hard fart victory. That would just make me extra petty when we call him a fart. <laughs> um, Emperor fart Ming, fart. are you sure? Call him a fartling. Uh, uh, okay. Tony, for your next film, you're gonna have to feature like some character calling Earthlings fartlings. No, call, make a movie called The Fartling, starring Nathan as the fartling. As the fart, like a good horror film called The Fartling. <laughs> the fart. The Fartling. But, that's what I, I actually, uh, one show I do like that it's mostly lighthearted is The Flash. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, The Flash is yeah. good. I'm surprised how far they've gone with that, that the fact that they've actually introduced a telepathic man-eating gorilla villain. <laughs> gorilla Grunt. I haven't been keeping up with it, I don't spoil too much, but yeah, I mean, no. like, they've been going down like the, Flash's, Flash's villains in a sense though, you have to, like his, his rogues gallery is kind of very... They're they're out there. What I I call Flash's rogues, especially from from the com comics. Um, they're the Reservoir Dogs of mm -hmm. comics, where they're they're essentially like working class crooks. Yeah, like the they're like part. a ragtag team of. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute though. You said big old what gorilla? Not all of them are like. But, but yeah, big old gorilla. You mean Francisco Menendez was on the show? Oh. oh. Um. So uh, you're uh, you're making this uh, Flash uh, television series? Um, that's interesting. Oh. Very interesting. Uh, you better do it right, or um, I'm gonna have to fail you. Mm. Is that did you ever take a Francisco class? It's uh, oh, it's the, not, the, it's the, not the, as uh, good did, as uh, he did. Oh, I got, I got a story. I got a story. I got a story about Menendez. I have to tell the story. You heard the story. I think, I think Francisco, yeah, you were the ones he rubbed the wrong way. <laughs> this is another type of story. Now we've got this class. Oh, wait, here's Flash in his actual <laughs> comic strip comic. 
looking oh, costume. Oh, yeah, looking hot and sexy. But here's my quick story. It's like a Gundam character. We had this class. What was it called? The Advanced Directing. Advanced Directing. We're doing the, the midterm, right? And we're supposed to do this scene from, what was it called, Weatherby? And it's supposed to be a scene where I'm supposed to, you know, sh- shake the girl, right? It's supposed to be kind of like that kind of scene. And we're doing this, and Menendez looks at me and he goes, oh, what are you going to do in this scene? I go, well, that's what he's to do, because I'm supposed to be directed by this guy. I was coming up with the, these ideas for it. And he's like, well, show me how you're going to do it. And I was, you know, motioning him. I was like, no, you can't do that. Don't do it like that. Wait, uh, don't do it like that. Here. And then he grabs the glasses off of my face. Now go and do it. Now I'm completely blind. I have no direction from my director. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. I'm doing the scene, and I get angry, and I get frustrated. I go, ugh. And then Menendez goes, oh, well, I'll come back with another scene, or I'm going to have to fail you. I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker. And next time, I'm going to be, like, stealing the glasses off his fucking fat-ass head and be like, how do you like it, bitch? So, uh, I graduated Manda Cum Laude. I'm one of the best fucking students that came out of that fucking film department. Kiss my ass, Francisco, while you get pummeled by Steven Spielberg's bodyguards. Bastard. Jesus. <laughs> that was bottled up. Well, I think we're done with the commentary now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. God. God. Da, da, da. Huh. Why has he got it aimed at his dick? Because of Goldeneye, probably. No. It is God. actually. I think to- I think Tony's just like, uh. No, there's no way to follow that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, 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 you have to frustrate now. But no, no, seriously, folks. It's like, yeah, I guess it's Wait, like. What's wrong with the, uh, uh, this? Holy shit, it's Rita from Power Rangers. Yeah, it's Rita Repulsa, but it, it, does it look like she has like face makeup that's attached to her costume? Mm. It looks that way. I was gonna it's, s- like, it's, like not, it's like not on her face, but it's just around the edges where her... It looks like that chick from, that chick from Cape Fear and Goodfellas. You know the one Scorsese was with for a while? Probably just a helmet that's too small. <laughs> you know, you're, you want to know a good directing tip, though? Because you did mention something in, in mid rant somewhere. Yeah. There. yeah. Um, good directing tip is uh, a lot of times people are afraid of actors. Don't be afraid of actors. Faster, um, more intense. When you are working on a low budget, sometimes having an actor just go walk about a scene is the most disastrous thing you can do. Um, but if you tell an actor and you're like not hesitant with them, but uh, you inform them that, hey, we have two hours, three hours to shoot this scene and we don't have any money to reshoot, so... You Wait, know, he we killed can, his wife? We can do... <laughs> what? what the hell is happening this right is, now? It says experiencing oh his life. But wait, what happened to his wife? She... Drowned? She's yeah, just it, going nutso and decides to go adios. No, time to go in the pool. This is like no, a but they threw her in the pool. Oi! Now this is a dark version of Fiddler on the Roof. The Jesus Christ! What the hell is going on here? This is creepy. Fish eye lens. Papa, Papa, can you no. hear me? Papa, can you hear me? Mama, stop hitting me! Woman groaning. No Wait, groaning. It, okay, I thought for a second he was going back to the moment of his conception. That would have been weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That would have been like, hey, what? Sploosh. What I the think they are, hell? actually. That is a, that's a good sequence. This I like it. Going like... It seems so out of Kubrick, place in this very movie, Very Kubrickian. Though. Rita Repulsa and uh, the yeah. Gwendolyn Christie from the new Star Wars movie. Yay! <laughs> uh, actually, I thought it was Rita Repulsa and, and um, dressed up Doctor Doom. I understand. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sorry, the directing tip is if you tell an actor, hey, you can do whatever you want, but uh, if you uh, come and walk by that window right there, you'll save us two hours and we'll be able to actually finish this movie. You know, they're more inclined to listen to you, you know, as long as you have a good reason for things. Don't just boss them, but, you know, empower them by giving them, you can empower somebody by giving them limitations. If that sounds counterintuitive, but it's really not. And also, for the love of God, What's don't don't take, don't t- put your hands on the actor's body. Like, like I'm taking off your glasses or whatever. <laughs> Just don't. Oh yeah, I'm hesitant to touch actors, even if I'm like really good friends with them. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, unless it's Nathan, slap the shit out of him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Nathan, I was shooting with him on Sunday, and he was like not hitting a mark properly, and I was kind of like in an awkward position that I couldn't really talk much, so I kind of could have pushed him a little bit but like 
I was just, I put my hand up so that like he knew where to go. I mean, it's crazy when you're, we shot low budget, like it was just me with a camera and him and then uh, Reagan Pfeiffer. So uh, it, it was an experience. Not much uh, of a planet. <laughs> The, the, the one, that's the one thing that's always weird to me about the movie is the way they define planets. Now, I like the idea that, that an entire solar system What is, is going on in this movie? This is like... This is a huge... This is movie. like some like X-Tube stuff going on right here. Like, this, this is about to start. You sexy this, minx, you. This has gone from Flash Gordon to Flesh Gordon. Oh, yeah. Did you see the Flash Gordon movies? No. Like, with, just, the, with, the, like with, the, with the turd monsters and the farting asteroid? But, and, the, and the ship that looks like a dildo? This ship looks like a... All the ships in this look like a... Oh, yeah. You know what? Women don't talk like this anymore. Like, that, like that's a... probably, like, close to her normal voice. They don't... They don't have that... It's like that kind of, like... If you listen to older movies, they just... The accent's gone now, and it's like that Audrey Hepburn-esque accent, where it's kind of... It's not like... It, it's they're talking just softly if that makes sense and on, on this sequence right now is um for some reason the movie that's coming to mind is um big trouble little china oh yeah that's a very good point it's due to observation um it's funny that also tony mentioned that because i remember ian mckellen talking about this where when he was training as an actor he had you know his real voice but then the real voice was taken you know out from through lessons and such and so the voice you hear now that's not his real voice it's it's one of those where he's kind of forgotten what he really does sound like. And it's one of those where he encourages actors to please hold on to what's yours. And that is, if you've, you know, got an accent, you've got a southern oh, voice, peyote embrace juice. it. Uh-huh. It's bad at all. Tranya. Yeah. <laughs> Tranya. Yeah. Which, of course, actually everyone knows that uh, Tony has an accent. I do. Apparently. Yes. So, what is your accent, Tony? Uh, it used to be Irish. It's not really there anymore. But uh, I was born okay, in Ireland. This this sequence is reminding me of the uh, the quote unquote sex this, scene from uh, Demol uh, Demolition Man. This is this reminds me of uh, Star Wars Episode Three, Two, and One because it is just shit with the backgrounds. But it's more interesting, though, with, like... Except I have to give them credit, because at least you can tell they're actually inside something. Yeah. And not only that, but the visuals are at least interesting to look at. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's cool. They're going through, like, some kind of, like, soapy... Soap, soap. Well, it looks like a lava lamp at times. Sometimes yeah. it's soap, sometimes it's lava I mean, it goes lamp. with the tone of the movie, too. Yeah. So, which works, you know. It fits. I were just tearing Star Wars apart. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you? Former professors apparently too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck with Hey, me. hey, why should I? Like, I'm not making a movie with him. He's not giving me a goddamn grade anymore. Fuck him. <laughs> I'm st- Francisco and I do get on. Oh. Fine. I haven't spoken to him in years. It's, I, th- I think he's alright, but still, fuck him that day. Jesus. <laughs> he, that, that, see, class he, was, that class was tough, and like, they. they the class he's talking about is an advanced directing workshop. Yes. And it is... It's sent multiple people yeah. out of the class in tears before. I, I, I did like this experience overall when it wasn't with him, like uh, Tylo and uh, Gilliard, Clarence Gilliard, Michael Tylo. But they were fun to you, be around. You should have saved that rant for when Keenan ever does one. Oh, God. Yeah, maybe Bobby I should Keenan would just squirm. He'd be like... Yeah, I can do that. Because Keenan no, Keen, he would have... Keenan would have squirmed worse time. than I just did. And I, I, the thing is, I wouldn't have squirmed because I would have watched Keenan over there. Just. <laughs> guy well, reminds me of Michael Bean for some reason. <laughs> this is like no wait, hold on. You right. This guy does remind me of a Michael, but he reminds me of a blonde Michael Brown. I was thinking group. that too, like Skippy. Um, Skippy. it's Skip. Oh God, it does. It's Skippy. Oh, God. It's Skip. Only his lovers call him Why Skippy. Why has Michael Brown stopped all acting? I, he wants to direct, I think. He said that four years ago. He hasn't directed anything. I thought he just... I thought he wrapped a short this year. Did he? I don't know. He's been saying something like he wanted to, but he's never gotten around to it. Just as long as he doesn't direct a London Boyd script. And I don't know if he still wants to act or what. Are you going to try and piss off London now? <laughs> Why well, he keeps friending and unfriending me on Facebook? 
Fuck Chris? that overrated guy too. <laughs> <laughs> David's, is there anybody else you just want to piss David's off? David's just making enemies. He's like, is there anybody else you want to piss off? Am making... I making any movies with those guys? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I might. Okay. Your wife, your wife must have made like you know upset you because no, you're trying to no, get on somebody's no, hit no. list right now, yeah. so you can just get over with it. Like this is gonna no. be this is gonna be awkward if by some reason London listens to this and I talk to him like so um. Why does David hate me? He's like, I don't, I don't, uh, fuck. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I just don't know why he keeps friending me and unfriending me on Facebook. What yeah, the hell? People, people don't take Facebook as seriously. No, but it's yeah. just weird. It's like, ah, uh, then you. Oh, uh, it's the, it's huh? the uh, meteor from Empire Strikes Back. Yes, it is. Oh, no, there's trees on it. That is obviously not Sheet. the same meteor. I thought it was God, the planets. Actually, right. I, I thought like it was stuffed with marijuana. I thought it was oh, the Dagobah. Dagobah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's the continent from Superman Returns. It's seriously what? The continent. Oh, the, yeah, the continent. Now, island. now, isn't that sad, ladies and gentlemen? I've got the flaps of you, no, I, if you had said <laughs> island, I probably would have gotten it. Or that's was it a small? Was it a? Con- I it, it was a be, continent. Was, was it just a, an island, or did he? Yeah. Well, no. The reason why I call it a continent was because he wanted to make a continent. He wanted to make it his own continent, yeah. but it was just about the size of an island. Oh shoot! Time for sexiness. Mm. Max von Sydow. Yes, now you understand why I signed for this movie. I. What? I don't know what Max von Sydow is Transylvanian? I, yeah, I turned into... A I want to suck your blood, blah, 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 blah. Like, from Bo Rat to, like, Dracula. Bo Rat? Bo yeah, Rat? There's a little bit of Bo Rat in there for a second. And Wait, so, are you... Who's, Bo, who's Bo Rat? Bo Rat, he's... Uh, he's Bo, Kazakhstan. Bo Rat. Oh, Bo Rat. Oh, Bo Rat. Bo Rat. You guys don't know who Bo Rat is? Ladies and gentlemen, the musical stylings of Bo Rat actually, did. I think he just had a kid today, I think. Another with, one? You know, with Isla Fisher, the lucky guy. Is that how you pronounce your name too? I thought it was. Uh, I've heard Isla, but I've also heard Isla. You, you, you are not sexy that, enough. Get out. That was almost. That was almost. <laughs> she's, a, like, <laughs> she's like. Woo. That was almost a reenactment of the scene where Frankenfurter seduces both Brad and Janet, just minus the curtain. You. It, it, okay. Now, don't get me wrong. Do you think that this? I feel like this movie could have all been shot in like old Vegas. Oh just, god, it like, could have been. Does it's not look like like just a, something out of old Vegas right now? Like her costume looks like something somebody might wear to like a cocktail party. I'm ninety percent sure it was shot in old Vegas. Hey, that was no sweet. Oh look, it's look that's so 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 and far. Look, gone. that's the Imperial Guard from freaking Star Wars right there. I swear to God, guys in red suits just can't do anything. So far, we've seen both Sniffits and Shy Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like how that guy's just like walking around like doo 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 like my buddy's on the floor dead. Look if she can do that, why didn't she do it earlier? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Because the script didn't call for her to do it back then, Cameron. Oh, oh headshot. Oh, Shit. My brain. Look, this guy who. What's going on here, guys? That's the Simon Lim of, uh. Of, there you go. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, what's happening? Why are you guys on the floor? Hey, why are you guys on the floor? Why are you going to hold your heart? Well, that was tough. Oh. Computers, people. <laughs> we are watching with subtitles, and it's always yeah. amusing. I especially love it when, like, a piece of music plays, as if a deaf person will know what music it is, what it sounds like. Gosh, what is it? Like, I, I saw this something the other time, and it was like, something intensifies. Oh, yeah! What is it? It's a... The some, I can't remember what it was. Music oh. intensifies. No, it was something ridiculous, like, from a movie... Um, Anger intensifies. Um, at, you know what? At least I can. Oh wait, no. Again, that was all of a sudden gotten unreal. I was about to go. Hey, at least she's not putting on her heels to run. No, no she oh, did. Fuck, no, she did. Like, I have to look pretty. No, I can't rest. We've got to get out of here. So what's happening? Uh, they're trying <laughs> to escape, and Flash Gordon's on Dagobah. Yeah. Yeah. And Flash Gordon's with some like succubus woman. Who's yeah, uh, like, Ming's daughter. Ming's yep. daughter. Oh my god, Jesus! And, and she just wants to bang him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, duh, he's Flash like, Gordon. Yeah, but like, is she good or bad? Or, I don't. She's, she's she seems like she's a succubus. A, she's a tweener. No, she's horny. She's a tweener. She's horny. Ming wants sex. Damn it. Look at that's his nipple what it is. Rings. Yeah, they all want sex. That's Ming and his daughter. Yeah, this they just guy looks sex. like a fucking Power Ranger. <laughs> Gordon's alive. Oh no! Wait, this later on. 
Anybody else see the Power Ranger thing a while back? And they're making a Power I, Rangers I, movie. I, 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 they were making the Power Rangers movie before that, but I, I when I first saw that Power Rangers thing, oh, I, dis, I despised it. You mean it. the gritty Power yeah, Rangers? Yeah, I, I hated it. And then when I watched it, I watched it again, and I figured out what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be uh, so over the top. It's a, it's yeah. a satire. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, a it's a sa- it's a satire that perfectly proves why not everything mm. needs to be dark and gritty. Yeah. And it, and for some reason, annoyed the shit out of me. Out of me. All these fa- all the fanboys like this is what Power Rangers needs to be. It's like, no, it doesn't. No, they're on Endor, not Dagobah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, now they're on Endor. What the hell's happening here? And What's remember, funny, this this th- came out before Jedi, didn't it? Yeah. Who's yeah. ripping off who now? But this was being, but Jedi was probably being filmed at this time. No, it wasn't. When was Jedi filmed? 81, 82? It's, it's probably Didn't the this same come out in 81? It's probably no, it was 80. Same. You pause it's, it's, it's the same set, sure. guys. It's the same set. They just, like, ran Actually, this looks a lot more plastic. Oh, yeah, absolutely does. Yeah. This looks like Princess Bride. Crappy. And then, are they sitting uh, on carpet? That's carpet. That's got to be carpet. That's carpet. Yeah. The, 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 carpet Jesus. In the jungle. Oh God! What was she doing? <laughs> I love initiations. Uh, I think she loves a lot of things, especially yeah. after what that guy was doing. Especially cock. And yeah, I think that's her. the worm from Star Trek: Two Wrath of Khan. And I said there's Peter Pan. And there's Riff Raff back there in the. Mm-hmm. So you got. Let's see. Who do you have in this movie? You got James Bond. You got Riff Raff. You've got Father Marin. You've got... What else has Brian Blessed done? Uh, he was like in the... Main fir- role. I was going to say I'll, Hamlet's father. I, I wasn't going to say I was gonna say main role, but he's a... Uh, Boss bl- Nass. He was Black he was Black I love Adder's how they father have the like series the, of Black Adder. They're trying to make it like a nice shot by having this fake tree hanging down in the foreground, but it's really just blocking all the action. This entire faces. thing <laughs> this entire sequence is shot on the same set the climax of Gremlins are shot. I was gonna say they shot on the same set as, Ew, as, as the same shot as troll on uh, the same set as trolls. You gotta that pay the Geiger, troll to HG get in. Geiger stuff going on there. What's all I put in? The, the the symbol on Flash's chest for a second looked like the the uh, s- the symbol on the shield of Helia. How many okay. times do you think they sprayed this guy in the face with the spray bottle? Big pistol. Everybody else around him's dry. I think Menendez did it. Like, oh, come here. <laughs> Dave. David, just just <laughs> let it go. Just let it go. It's okay. Oh. Nothing's wrong. He can't hurt you anymore. Yeah, that's true. Okay, pushes oh, him off. No, we're just gonna watch you die. Why would you want to be spared the madness? Boy grunting. <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna fuck him, isn't she? Isn't boy grunting Keenan's favorite sound? Yes. Especially that boy grunting. Woo! Actually, a little bit too old for him. Not gonna lie, if people wore what she was wearing in modern times, I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> people so wore, if you're, if people you're, wore what she was wearing casually in the 80s. So if your girly girl decides to show up like that, you're gonna be like, hey. No comment from Tony. <laughs> I'm not gonna be not hey. I brought you a present. I bought you a pu- Yeah, what if she starts talking like Lily von Strick? Doesn't it, doesn't it look like I bought a, you a present. Doesn't it look like the Hillian shield I on his chest? James Bond. You mean like the Triforce as well? Let me go to... Well, no, with the wings. The, the wings around the... Who is that? He got, never got a fair shake at being Bond. He had the... I, License the Kill is an underrated classic. And Living Daylight's pretty damn good too. He's got two really good Bond films. I'd argue that those are... Those rival the best of Roger Moore. I, I think, like, for me, Roger Moore had one truly great Bond film, and that's The Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah. And then there were others that I, 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 I like Moonraker, man. Oh, God. Your, your best friend loves that movie. Moonraker. You know, guys, guys, guys. Now, oh, now, fuck. now. Yeah, he loves that movie. We're Dude. like, are you an idiot? <laughs> the only yeah, thing I loved okay. about that movie was the video game that came out of it. There was a oh, Moonraker yeah. video The game? song? What about the song? No. Uh, the Moonraker song? No. I love it's, the it's Moonraker not, song. It's not awful because there is a the worst Bond song of all time. Is to me is still Man with the Golden Gun. I hate that song. Where's it oh. going? He's like the man with the, the golden gun. gun. Yeah, She's like right. the man with the golden yeah. gun. Look, Anakin, Anakin's gonna go look for the the freaking Tuscan Raiders. The same <laughs> yeah. There they are. And uh, Alex Raymond's Hawkman obviously uh, inspired the character of Hawkman that would come a little bit later. Mm-hmm. 
Tell me that you can't like punch your way out of that damn thing. It's like twi a twig cage. They like, tied it with straw, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, like, oh, we'll hold him in here with I like how sticks direct... and straw. I like how directors, let's all team up and fight him. I just love the uses like, of the lizard man. You could fit your head. Look, you can literally climb out. No, you can jump out. What are you doing? You can squeeze out. So yeah. You can squeeze out of that thing. Oh, God, now we're in the... We're in the bog of eternal stench? Yeah. This is where See, the Sarlacc monster, I, I will, like, I, takes a piss. I will say this. I, the Roger Moore movies <laughs> I actually enjoy are, um... Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me, which is just a great <laughs> oh. movie. This movie is ahead of its time. It's like 50 Wait, Shades Wait, what is Fifty Shades of Grey? And, uh, for your eyes only, I enjoy... And I also enjoy Octopussy. I enjoy uh, Live and Let Die. It gets... It's very, very dated. Live and Let, but live and let Die... I have a blast for it. Kind of has me, but then when it gets to the voodoo stuff at the end, I'm gone. Oh, I love the voodoo just because I, of, I, I, of Jeffrey Holder. But, uh, I, I, but I, live, and let die, live and Let Die has a great song and a great Bond yeah. girl. Oh, Solitaire. Oh, my... Jane Seymour was... Yeah, she's amazing in that. She's, she's so actually 20. Hot. But but and this thing, Live and Let Die isn't even the worst Bond movie. It's not by a long shot. The worst Bond the movie. Die was, day. No, the worst Bond movie is Man with the Golden Gun. The worst Bond movie is. I don't know, man. Die another day. Is die another die another day is bad. That well, just die well, another day is like that popcorn movie, like that just that generic popcorn. Yeah, die, movie. die another day is bad, but it has a good opening with a good general idea of has Bond been compromised, like him being captured and tortured for a while. I, the opening is all is good, but it just doesn't lead all I, anything. All I can think of is Madonna. Quantum, yeah, Madonna, Quantum of Solace might be Solace is pretty. It, Solace is bad, but n I can sit through Solace and go, okay, that's bad. <laughs> but I can't sit through Man with a Golden Gun. Man with a Golden Gun is awful across the board. So wait, wait. I don't even remember Man with a Golden Exa Gun. Exactly. Like, that's exactly all, the all point. All I remember He's... is that them like sh like shocking <laughs> each other and his thing at the end. Now, but... now, Cameron, is he coming up with the score for shock treatment? You're actually making me listen to this. See if I can recognize any of the notes. What is he blowing into? I thought he'd be blowing. I, bet, I bet you whoever a like came up with Rocky this. Horror. There's like some very like I don't know. It's like almost like a Wachowski like vibe to this movie with like the costumes and like the shit that's going on. But, but that's my point. You can't remember anything that happens with Man in the Golden Gun. All I, I remember, remember, all I remember is them stalking each other in the arena and like. The, 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 I remember oh. the wonderful bit where he uh, he he goes to see. Um, Oh my god, what's the name of the actress? Because she also played Octopussy. Oh my oh, god. No, no, her, her real name is Maude Adams. Maude Adams. When they go to see Maude Adams, he's like, oh, did you get it? And he discovers she's dead. It's like, what happened? Then this nice, well-dressed man sits next to him. And Bond's like, oh no, what's happening? And he's like, oh. And he, he basically goes over his origin story about how he became the man with the golden gun. And that's a really good I scene. I where they just talk about how it's like, and there's like an elephant, and he got angry, and he killed a guy over the elephant. See, but see, that's the thing. The movie was so bad. I don't remember that. I don't remember. It's one of those things like the prequels. I can't remember any specific shot from this. I can't prequels. remember. I'll actually say this. I think. What about the gun? The that gun. The, uh, the the car moment. Of course, that's ruined by I the. I don't remember. The, the... Don't remember it. I, no, I, I, just... I always thought that was in another Bond movie. Is he supposed to be like an Asian dude? Because he totally Ming the Merciless like uh, is kind of infamous for everyone. Say, uh, saying he's supposed to be an Asian stereotype, and that might have been the intent, or it might not have been. I'm not sure. So basically, black face but Asian face. But it's but it's but in a way, it's it's sort of like I always thought he was just an alien. That was just it, and that's yeah. just the way he looked because yeah. he doesn't play him like you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will cut you off. That would be the way you would. Me go right, me. I saw, I saw. Me rock the fine device. Me flop my ticket on time. I hear you, fresh guardy. Mongolians. You don't like that shitty walk. Ah, fuck but, you, Mongolians. And we've lost all credibility with our Asian. Yes. It makes you feel better. I have a lot of Asian. That's the but so I've this made my, the this Asians, my... Menendez, London mad. Who else have I made mad? You didn't really make London mad, which is actually, you you know, 
Yeah, because I like London. I just I'm just confused over some of the stuff, and I think some of his scripts are bad. But I still like the guy. <laughs> okay, man, okay, he's gonna get mad gone. over yeah, that. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's kind of like this thing about being an artist where criticism doesn't take it well sometimes. And... Well, d- dude, remember when you made that one short, and I went up to you and I said I was disappointed in it, and you're like, "Yeah, I was disappointed in it too," because I felt really guilty because I think you're a great guy, and. I love your work, but that one short I was very disappointing. Remember the one with Mike Brown as a soldier? Yes. It was. A, it was like I was disappointed because you did that that wonderful short last the, the year before that uh, beach one, right? The dream in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, that was great, and I was like, and I loved your other stuff, and I saw it, and I was a little disappointed. I was disappointed with that one too. Yeah. A lot of stuff happened on that one. Oh, and we we passed the moment when he goosed her. No, I saw it. Yeah, he goosed her. <laughs> Gordon's alive. Stop. Gordon's alive. Dark Knight spoilers. Now is the time to strike. And the, the interesting thing is that um, oh my god, it's fucking Luke Skywalker. Yeah. When when Brian Blessed told that story, that apparently he would go up to Queen Elizabeth like, we watch this film all the time. Could you please say Gordon's alive for the kiddies? <laughs> Riff Raff's a fucking badass. Like you've seen Dark City, right? Yeah. He's fucking good in that movie. Because of you, Mr. Murdoch. Tree man. <laughs> oh, we're speaking of uh, when Lorenzo Simple Jr., right? Mm-hmm. Screenwriter who did this. He, I remember him giving an interview about this where he was very disappointed. And he says that they shouldn't have gone campy. And that he thinks that one of the big faults of the film was how silly it was. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's sort of like, is it well, can't whole, be, yeah, you know, I mean, they're fun. playing this all out in a wide shot, and they literally just cut from one wide shot to another wide shot that was yeah. about a foot to the right. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I, at this point, I just think they don't give a shit. <laughs> like, screw it. Whatever angles we've got. Let's do it. Let's do Let's it. Let's fall in love. This is, this is like the. This is like a reference this to is, like STDs. I was gonna say this is like a proctologist. This is the budget version of Luke going into the cave. In Empire. Must be my lucky day. Nobody has a lucky day when you're fisting a tree. <laughs> I fisted a tree before. It was kind of sticky. I did. Just, Back just, in, just, I did. I fisted a tree. It's like it was a bunch of like maple syrup that come out of the tree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my wife listens to it. She's like, "What else have you fisted?" Oh wait. I think that was my Triple H's buy moment, right? Wait, what? Remember when Triple H goes um, when he goes, like, "Are you bilingual?" And he goes, "I'm by a lot of things, but not lingual." And then he pauses and he goes, "Did I really just say that?" I don't remember that. Was that one of the DX things? Yes. And no, it was a mistake because he was said it, that. Was he, it with uh, when he was with the Sean in the beginning? It was on commentary for King of the Ring okay. 1998. And okay. he just says that. And he just pauses and he goes, did I really just say that? Well, he and Sean were pretty close. Ooh. Tony, he's, I'm, he's on the edge of his seat right now. I want to see what happens here. You know, we haven't really mentioned Ted yet. Please. So when you saw that Ted was going to make a Flash Gordon reference, did you think, oh, that's nice and cute and clever? Or did you think that's another example of Seth MacFarlane being too on the nose with it's, cultural references? Well, it's one of those Which things... One? In Ted? In Ted, is one of those things where, as opposed to what usually goes on in Family Guy, <laughs> it felt like the Flash Gordon stuff was actually integrated into the plot where Flash Gordon was something that he and Ted shared as a you know something they loved. Yeah. So it didn't feel like as much of a, hey, remember Flash Gordon? It was goofy. It was definitely part of that. But it was also like, oh, this is also something that's very important to these two friends. So it, in that sense, no, it didn't bother me at all. I think Ted's a perfectly fine moving example that Seth MacFarlane is capable of a lot more than the Family Guy stuff he's known for. Oh, Seth MacFarlane's very talented. But yeah. He just enjoys that stuff, though. Mm. He enjoys making people, I yeah. think. 
He's angry. He's a talented guy, but he's just a horse's ass. Yes. Now he pissed off Seth MacFarlane too. No, he would probably agree with okay, you. He pisses yeah. people off for a living. Oh well, no, it's like because it's like I like the Oscar stuff he did. Because no, he, he's been funny. the best host of the Oscars in in years. But it's just like it's just his ego that I think it's I that he kind of has this little I don't know. What Hollywood ego? What? Yeah. What? 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 Uh, what? Still, so I'd rather have a Hollywood ego that takes the piss out of Hollywood on a regular basis. True, that's a good point. Just like I'm pretty, I'd be, I think it's be fair to say that Ricky Gervais has an ego, but he takes the piss out of people who fucking are too high on themselves. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, "We don't hate you, Ricky, because you're cute." Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "I actually really do hate you. I, I really do." Ricky Gervais is like that religious person who comes to your door and won't like stop talking about their religion, except he's an atheist. <laughs> It's like the opposite. Ah, uh, the dog's gonna get me. Uh. Oh, no. Now, I want to point out that it is indeed Oki Noki Swamp. It's like a fucking face hugger, except it grew up. <laughs> oh, it's this is elk. almost like a. He's, be, he's being massaged. Yeah, I this think is he's this is almost like that. Uh, God, what's the name? The uh, Merkward Forest in um, oh, the Hobbit. Hobbit. Yeah. yeah. Ew, I was being digested. This is one grave you won't be returning from. What was it you said that it did look like this is a place where the Sarlacc would go to take a piss? Yes. Yeah. That is that is still very very true. That's a dick. No, that's that looks a, like, yeah, to me that looks like a, a bee. Yeah, it looked like a fly. A dick bee. Them. Dick bee. Gordon's alive. What is about Ming? Oh man, that guy has like a golden Doctor Doom face. Speaking of golden stuff, Man with the Golden Gun is still the worst Bond movie. I was asleep. This guy that's like the thing in Cap... Or, uh, not Captain America. <laughs> the thing in Doctor <laughs> Doom had a baby. The thing in Captain America. And then underneath, like, the fucking king from uh, Kingdom of Heaven. I, I like, like how I like how most of the uh, <laughs> is Edward Norton. I like how most of the opinions on the uh, thing the thing picture from the new uh, Fantastic Four movie. But oh come on guys, it's not that bad. It's like isn't that the point that it should be more than not bad? Well, I just have a little bit less respect for all those actors. I feel. Oh yeah, I, I have a, I don't ha- I have a little bit less respect for everyone involved in that movie. I mean, I guess they're taking a paycheck, you know, but paycheck's a paycheck. But at the same time, it's like they know it's gonna be a shit show. And what what bugs me is no no one's calling it out for all the f- stuff <laughs> it's obviously doing. I just don't think people care about it. You know, like well, Fantastic Four was kind of like. I don't know. See, here's the thing about no Fantastic Four movie has grasped onto the fun of it. Yeah. That's a good point. It's supposed to be like... More Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, the, I would say the best way to describe it would be... Have you Look, here, there's a perfect example. Have you ever seen The Incredibles? Because that's the best Fantastic yeah. Four movie. Huh. Yeah. Did I tell you about who I would have cast as Fantastic Four, like, when they were coming up with the movie? Like, this was back this in, like, 2004. Oh. I thought I would have cast George Clooney, Renee Selweger, John C. Riley, and some other guy. Because I can imagine as the thing. thing. Okay, I, can, I thought I was like, no, you would torch this John C. Riley. So I'm on fire. That's hilarious. Flame on. I was like, okay, to see that shit. I, I, on, I remember buddy. before this movie was announced, I always thought if Marvel ever got it back, the, like I had two people on the top of my head that I would love to have seen the Fantastic <laughs> Four. I thought David torch. Tennant as Reed Richards. That'd be good. And a Natalie Dormer as Sue. Who's Natalie Dormer? She's uh, uh, Game on of Game Thrones. of Thrones. Oh, which one? She's a. Uh, oh, the redhead? Mar- Marjorie. No, Marjorie Targaryen. No, it's not Targaryen, Terrell. it's Tyrell. Marjorie Tyrell. She's uh, the one who's. Who, uh, she's Mary in the Hunger G- Games, the last Hunger Games. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Was she the one who was, who was engaged, but then he died, and then she got engaged? She was wearing green, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she showed her. Yeah, and like, in uh, most of the. Everybody uh, shows their boobs? Yeah. I Everybody thought, shows her. I thought she showed. Uh, no, I thought she showed her boobs on that other show. The, the oh yeah, she did it on. Um, uh, it was the one where she played Anne Boleyn. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, she, uh, I like her. I think her normal hair color is blonde, and I always ever. I, mean, I usually always see years. her playing, uh, playing like you know, kind of like this m- more sinister character or people with like a uh, ulterior motive. I always thought I w- I want to see characters who are known mostly as villains playing somebody who are more heroic. 
Well, you and, know what's funny is like I'm, I'm like looking at her and I see like all the stuff she's done. She's really great. And she's still yeah. young. And then she's in the Hunger Games and she was talking about this role. And I'm like, oh, she's finally getting a big breakout role in a huge movie. That's just great. And I watched the Hunger Games and she doesn't do anything the entire goddamn movie. She the, just runs around with the camera and says nothing. But the best description I've ever heard of Natalie Dormer is um, she is uh, when you see Natalie Dormer smile, it's like she knows exactly how the world's going to end and she's responsible. <laughs> you know who That's Natalie good. Dormer is? Huh. Like, she is the uh, girl bunny from Space Jam. That's basically like, oh. it, like if you put like a side by side comparison, it's like. Oh my man. god! I'm just getting that. Holy <laughs> shit! You're right. Well, I'm just putting that. I'm just putting them side it's by un- side in my un- head. Uncanny. Oh my god! That was a nice. And no, that, no, that's not an insult. It's just like no, it's no, not. I meant that. That was a oh. nice. Not that. The, no, it's like the bunny. You know, that, funny. that looks like it could actually injure yourself. Like, Unless those are made set. of some kind of rubber. Yeah. Even still, that yeah, that would hurt. Fucking you. hurt. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was back in the days when nobody gave like, a shit. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. These the same okay, people. Not, wait, same not, people wait, worked you know on what? twice on the movie. I am not so sure those are rubber now. Like, ask yeah, screw it, if he dies, he dies. Now, I want to pose this question to you, Cameron. If the Gungans were that, were the, the Hawkmen, and Brian Blessed was that, okay. would that have been slightly more acceptable? Okay, you do know the big difference bes- between them besides the way they look, right? It's the fact that we see them doing something. Yeah. I know. That's a, a, Misa, see, it, I think that you don't know shit. See, here, see, here's the th- here's the thing: the Gungans, as they are, and that includes Jar Jar, could have been acceptable if we had something to humanize them, mm. something where we tell them these guys are, are humanized. I love the world they live in, the underwater <laughs> stuff, and the going into like the bubble. That's really cool. You know what's hilarious, right, guys? Is that they tried to make Jar Jar the Han Solo of the series. Like, he's a dick. If you oh, listen God. to the stuff he says, he's a dick the whole time. See, I always thought they were trying to make him the Chewbacca of the prequels. No. He's supposed to be, like, the Han Solo, like, but he's stupid. If you look at it... Wait, does that mean that Lucas he thinks was, Han is but, stupid? But but there, that's true, because isn't there a moment in Phantom Menace where he, he says, like, the Force, and he starts mocking them? Yeah. For believing in the Force? He does There's all that moment. kind of stuff. He does that, and he's like, oh, I don't need any of that. Blah, 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 blah. Like, like, all this stuff... And but then he does something silly and st- like stupid. But oh, so is he? Tr- so is Lucas trying to say that he thinks Han is stupid? I have uh, no idea. Don't think so. Just just saying he's stupid. Now what if it was Boss Nasty? What was him going? You are full of shit. That would I think that would work a lot more like like someone who doesn't buy Jedi stuff. Yeah, and it's, but that would make and him and a lot more like blessed. Java. That'd make him a lot more like Java. No, but he would say that, but he'd still be there like whatever. But I still help you out. No, I'm, I'm, no, but I'm saying that would make him a lot Shit, more like that looks a like Java real blood. Everything. Yeah, that's what actually yeah. happened, yeah. Like I said, these were the same guys who worked on Twilight Zone the movie. Damn Now they're gonna fuck. Where you go, I follow. Did you see the footage of Fick Morrow's head going flying? A uh, who's? Uh, from Twilight Zone the movie, you know, no, the guy I, who got I, I killed, try, his head got decapitated. I tried to avoid that. You could see of... it. I saw it, and it's like you see two little heads flying. It's in the movie. No, 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 no. It's the, uh, it's clip on YouTube. I, saw I would it. never. I can't, I couldn't watch on the movie. Yeah, and it, it was like one of those faces of fear. You know, those kind yeah. of things. A face of death. What are they called? Faces of death. Yeah. Do you, do you guys go like on Reddit at all ever? Sometimes. They have like this thing called the Reddit Enhancement Suite, where you can press like like uh, a button, and it loads all the images on like one page, and it uh-huh. keeps scrolling, so you don't have to hit next. So yeah. It's really handy. But sometimes when you go to comment threads and stuff, like you hit that, like just to see what memes people are posting, and then you go down and down and down, and then some asshole posts like some video of some guy getting decapitated, and you're like, what the fuck? Like I, I like it's just like you're going in for this like goddamn funny thing, and then it's like all of a sudden you're seeing someone die. Jesus. Screw those people. Yeah. Or or they show Pain Olympics. Do you remember the Pain Olympics? That's the one where this guy. Is uh, cutting open his. Yep, his... yep, yep. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Back to movie. How about two girls, one cup? Tortured aura. An interesting girl. I think. <laughs> oh my god, help me. That was inferred. Why would they do that? It's like. You can easily beat him. Oh, he threw one of the spikes. Ha ha ha! 
That's actually oh. pretty grim. It is, but it's cool. I love how Flash is just kneeling by the body. He's like, whoa, that was really cool. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. That's awesome, but I did, totally didn't mean to. <laughs> I always love that he's always about to hit somebody. I cannot think of Hot Fuzz, like, with him when he's got that mustache. <laughs> See, if he was like that in Star Wars, like, oh, but man. That, but, you, but that also... Uh, he has to do stuff, right? Yeah, that also implies that he, we have to, he have to see these people be characters. Well, this is what I'm, try, oh, I'm trying to get at, and that is if you cast someone like Brian Blessed, who is a wonderful ham. I mean, he's got spit on his goddamn beard. He's a wonderful ham, and you don't have him really do anything except... Which is actually something that he does. He's very professional. Going one of his many... How many different many outfits does he put on in this movie? And how are they all so color-coordinated for him? I'm telling you, there's some like Wachowski shit going on yeah. here. I love the dominoes they have on there. Very nice. We'll need some rope. <laughs> You're living... Of all the things to bring... Rope. You could have brought like a futuristic gun. You brought a goddamn rope. Wait, good thing we have a rope. Yeah, like hook up a lasso and try to get the ship. <laughs> well, it gets cold, I like, Tony. I like his first command. He's like, I know you're a dick, so I'm just, should I just kill him? <laughs> I want that outfit. Which one? The Ming's outfit? Yeah, look at that thing. That's awesome. I still think his robe's cooler. Well, that's cool, too. Just anything Ming wears, I want to wear it. Maybe not the helmet, because I'm not bald yet, so. You should work on that. Oh, well, I already shaved my head once. I don't Actually, not once. God, numerous times. Which is a better performance? Max von Sydow as Ming... Or Frank Langella as Skeletor. Skeletor. Tony? I, I, I like this a lot. Don't get me wrong, I think Max von Sydow does greatly, but there's just something about the way... I think Langella almost uh, savors it more. You know what the best thing about it, though, is is that when you they talk about those movies, they, they legit... And you think that they're these classically trained actors, brilliant actors, they worked with all these wonderful directors, and they love these roles. They love these movies. They get to have fun and relax. Well, yeah, they can yeah. play. They can they can make choices that they can never make in the roles that people usually hire them for. Yeah. So like Max von Sydow is like, like uh, probably like looking through scripts around this and like, oh, okay, dead. Priest. Well, like Vegeta here. Grim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sad. <sighs> Gay pirate. Gay pirate. Maybe. But this also reminds me, this was the... Why is, he, why is he crying? This is the same year that was released an Airplane, right? And that's a bunch of other actors. Uh, Lloyd Bridges, Robert, uh, Robert Stack, uh, Leslie Nielsen, who are known for being serious actors, dramatic roles. Yeah. And it was funny, because when Lloyd Bridges was making the movie, he was like, I, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. And Robert Stack looks at him and goes, Lloyd, we're us. And he goes, oh, okay, I understand. And that's where it is. It's like that's when you, it's actually very just interesting. We have these actors who are known for being serious, and they're actually given a chance to have fun, and they're it's reveling the same in it. That, uh, Darth Maul yep. Uh, -uh, uh, he came back. It's, it's the same. It's also the same pit that um, Loki fell in. Is that also the same pit where George Lucas's soul fell into? No, that is that pit is Lucas's soul. Oh, I kid, George Lucas. I kid. I don't. Yeah. Although I do, I, there is one great story about modern George Lucas I love. It's, uh, I think it was something where um, he involved uh, him wanting to uh, build, like, either affordable income housing near where he lived or um, open, yeah. or open some kind of near the nearest studios yeah. so the people who uh, work there would have some place closer to live that they could afford. And since it was next to, like, an affluent neighborhood, they kept blocking him every time. Mm -hmm. So instead, he built his studio. He built, like, a new studio or something even closer. How convenient. Just, 
that was that was that was closer to the rich people who were saying don't build that housing there, and the studio was noisier and all that stuff. Something it was just something where he was like where he's actually trying to help people, mm-hmm. and then when they then when um you know people wouldn't allow you, he's like okay I'm gonna fuck with you then, hope you don't mind. I'm going to fuck with people that loved me for years. What do you think I'll do with you? An actual model that blew up, Cameron. <laughs> well, you could have told him that in fucking person, you bitch. They were brave creatures, Voltan. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. He looks like he's taking a shit. <laughs> Did his beard just get shorter? Maybe. I think it did. He is so awesome, his beard can get shorter and longer within a span of like five minutes. What the fuck does May Day mean? <laughs> okay, I want you to think of this really cool, really quick, and this isn't taking away from Brian Blessed, but imagine Connery in this role. <laughs> The, f- the thing about Connery is that he, he is very prickly in the roles he picks. And as, let's see, they offered him the role of Morpheus in The Matrix. He goes, I don't understand it. Throws it away. Then Lord of the Rings shows up. Hey, you want to play the part of Gandalf? I don't understand it. But you're going to make a shit ton of money with this deal. I don't understand it. Then he sees the success of both those movies and he goes, Huh, maybe I should pick the script of something I don't understand. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen! Bomb. <laughs> it's hard to imagine this Gandalf without him slapping every one of the hobbits at least once. Oh. Cat fight! I feel like this is what Persia was like. When it's, <laughs> it's like these silk <laughs> beds with women rolling around all the time. Can you do me a favor? Can you actually make a scene like this in one of your movies? Just a, a big, Ex- long pillow fight. Except have it have uh, Nathan and Reagan pillow fighting. But they're both in negligee. Oh my... Wait, you said Reagan? Yeah, Nathan... Oh my god. Nathan and Reagan p- reenacting this scene. In trouble. Except it's Nathan in the pink dress. Oh god, Nathan... That would be so freaking funny. Especially Reagan, like, you know, knocking him out with a just a simple little pillow. And she would do it, right? I think she would. Yeah. She'd be like, this is the most awesome idea ever. I'm there, you guys. And she would do as many takes. She had to do something crazy the other day. I think she was telling me about it, but I can't remember because my brain is fried. <laughs> and plus, any opportunity for someone to hit Nathan, they'll take. I mean, shoot, in our last commentary, we hit Nathan like 20 goddamn times. Mm-hmm. You hit him? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. He has to learn. He, he needs to learn his place. Yeah. Word of honor. <laughs> what word? Fiddlesticks. Word of honor. It sounds like a shitty military movie. Word of honor. Rated PG. That's gonna be the next Call of Duty game. Call of Duty. Word of honor. Starring Taylor Kitsch. It's like, it's like a Telltale game. Jenny Tatum. Except every time you make a choice, you have to pay another dollar. <laughs> now that will make it a Call of Duty game. And I have to admit that when I got married, I was originally going to wear that, but then like, my, again, big trouble in little China. My wife was like, "Nope, don't wear that." Why didn't she wear it? Because she wanted to be Jasmine. So she wore the Jasmine dress. And she looked... Ah, that's how she looked. Ah, she. That's a, and that's a miniature with a doll. Yeah, I always love those shots. Because I know it's a doll, but I don't care. It's nice. General Gala. Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean? Flash Gordon approaching. Did I stutter, bitch? <laughs> I love how they're all like dominatrixes and evil and stuff. It's hilarious. And I said it's Fifty Shades of Grey. She's like literally space. whipping somebody. Yeah. She's never got like that like European, uh, Russian, Ukrainian like. Eilina Douglas. That's action. what she looks like. Eilina I wonder Douglas. where all this stuff is now. Like all the props and models. I'd love it... to have that. Like, do you think? I love how they don't. Those don't look like lightning bolts to me. They look like their swords are being fired fired at them, like laser swords, like a bunch of master swords from Zelda just yeah. blasting off at them. 
Now, I love when, when my, my wife was watching this for the first time. Oh she knew the song. She was like such a Oh my god, next song. time we get a shot of that thing, tell me you don't think that, might, that looks like one of the cities in Gallifrey. I definitely see it. Yeah. And there goes the dick ship. It's Gundam, I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know why did I just think of Final Fantasy as well when I looked at that ship. Because uh, it kind of looks like the Super Ni- something out of the Super Nintendo Final Fantasy. Yeah, it would. I'd like to see that a Final Fantasy, like like one adapted from like Final Fantasy VI, something like that, be made into a movie. That'd be nice. And I don't mean that Final Fantasy the Spirits Within, although I like that movie. What about the one they made on based on Final Fantasy uh, VII, Advent Children? I think. Oh, I am not a big fan of the... So I agree with what they said about how 7 kind of started the downward turn of Final Fantasy. I, I, I don't know if I necessarily believe it because 9 came out after 7. I think 9 is probably my favorite of that era. 9 might be my actual favorite Final Fantasy game. I, I think Final Fantasy began to taper off as soon as 10 happened. I really like 10. Do you? I just, yeah, I like I, I like ten. I, I I played like one, two, three, four, and then ten. So I kind of skipped on everything in between. And I played eleven, and it was just weird. I just like the way that line read. Okay, let's go on after. Him. Yeah, whatever. Okay. We're, we're get him. It pisses me off now that they keep going like with all these stupid online only things. I don't play Final Fantasy online. I don't like playing online games. Yeah, same here. I mean, I, like, I do for certain games, but not Final Fantasy. For me, it's like, I just do online if I want to download a game, and that's it. It's like, one of the reasons why I like Dragon Age, it's like, basically Final Fantasy, but without mm-hmm. Final Fantasy being on and we're fin- And we're finally getting a new, uh, Dragon Quest game in the U.S. Woo! Die! Die! Have you, you, have you guys ever seen a show called Snuffbox? No. Uh, it's a really good British show. I can't, uh, I can't remember the actors who it stars. Um, the, have you guys ever seen a show called The Mighty Boosh? I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. Okay, well, two guys from there are, are the guys who created and star in Snuffbox. Yeah. And um, the way Brian Blessed is talking right now, I wonder if the actor kind of got his tone of voice for saying this, but he says, Whiskey! <laughs> I think it's pretty much guaranteed that if you're in a British production <laughs> and you're doing that, you're obviously making you're Brian paying tribute Blessed. to Brian Blessed. Is he still alive? Oh, yeah. In fact, this is how ba- much of a badass he is. He had, I think, either a heart attack or something happened to him on stage during the production, and he's like, fuck that. He got back up and he finished the performance. That's kind of like when Taz broke his neck and went to, and walked to the hospital. God. You've heard that story, right? Oh, yeah. I know that the laser battle is supposed to make us think Star Wars, but for some reason with the different shades of laser, I'm thinking nothing but G.I. Joe when they fired guns at each other. Oh, yeah. And bad guys had the red lasers, good guys had the blue ones. I still say Captain America, the first movie, was ruined by the fact that they had all that bullshit, like... Hydra weaponry. I, I, Captain America is still probably my. It's either that or Winter Soldier is my favorite solo Marvel Marvel movie. Winter Soldier, I loved, but the first Avenger, I, I like. I lo- I dug it all the way up until like they started having tanks that were ridiculously large and all that. I like it fine. That's Although I prefer I, Rocketeer. It's mm. it's weird because I think of all the solo movies. Captain America's had the most consistent rate of being good. Like, Iron Man... First Iron Man was great. Iron Man 2's god-awful. Then Iron Man 3 is really good. <laughs> then Thor is 50% great, if there's not boring as hell and frustrating. And the Dar- Thor the Dark World, I know a lot of people give a chip, but I think it's a fun buddy cop movie. Oh, I hate that movie. I've, Dark World to me is like fun buddy cop. I got so bored watching it. Who's the buddy? It's Thor and Loki. Uh, well, no, that's the only thing that was good about that movie. It's like Thor and Loki, but when they're not on screen together, it's boring as hell. <laughs> see, that's, see, that's the way I feel about the first Thor movie. Like, when it's not... When, when they're not on Earth, I'm bored to tears in the first Thor movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one part of Thor, the first one oh I like, is when he's exploring fighting. his environment and, like, getting used to Earth. And yeah. 
Uh, that was the fun. That's you know, that's the second act of the, the movie but, right there. And then like, it, what the was fuck no, was going on there? He no fucking knocked foe. him off. He's like, ha ha! I got wings. You die. He's being a dick. But what, what really bugged me about the first Thor movie was how he got his powers back because it was such oh, a oh god, it was such a bullshit. cop out. He summoned his hammer instead of picking it up. Like, go see, because the, that's the thing. thing. They they set up the they set up him not being able to pick up his hammer, which I don't think you should set up unless you're gonna pay it off. You're gonna pay it off. Exactly. That pissed me off so much. It pissed me off. He just was like, Deus ex machina. Exactly. Because I I thought that I mean, there's another way to do that. Like maybe you know have the destroyer hit Thor so hard he goes flying and conveniently yes it's still cheesy but conveniently he lands near his hammer yeah but it's, that's, and that's he, convenient and it, but it's not as convenient yeah. as putting your hammer in and, and then like and and plus it's just a stronger scene where he's like desperately reaching for his hammer and with his last breast, he, breath he grasps his it last his last breast yeah, last his breast. last breast his last that's breast. a better film ladies and gentlemen with his last breath he grasps it and then, as he dies, the hammer loosens, and then, as, <laughs> and then, as soon as it falls to the ground, you cut back to the to the other people. And you hear lightning strike in the background. That's how you do that scene. Why? Why did they just have a scene of where they all solve their problems by with a cup of tea or something? Shut up, Rex Reed. He probably threw it on the ground and asked for another. Mm-hmm. He probably would. Or have a milkshake. Go to Steak and Shake. I, okay, I'm wondering if by any chance, like the final sequence of um, a Big Trouble in Little China, when Lil Pan's gonna marry those the two women, is, this? is inspired by this. I'm getting such a do big trouble. Do you think that by John Carpenter was watching this? He's like, fuck this, Let's I'll do it better. David on her head? Are they saying the Jews are evil? I don't know. She has a star of David on her forehead. Look, it looks like it anyway. It's got the six sides. Uh. Anti Semites. She's not wearing a bra. Bow, okay. Pointing that out. Ain't nothing wrong Pointing with it. it out, though. She's pointing it out, sister. What <laughs> 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 It looks like some guy just, <laughs> just wrote that, whatever. Why are you shoot the camera? They're she, obviously going to know you're there. She's got a good shot. Yeah, Wouldn't it just been like... <laughs> just, she's a Oh, my No, that's not a... Is that a Star of David? She, I don't know. It's strange, right? She also reminds me of Uma Thurman right now. I, I, I see Eileen at Douglas. That's who I see. I love how this girl is just like Barbie. Does everyone have the Schwartz? Yeah. And that's 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 actually that's actually what happened when I asked my wife to marry me. I don't know. Sure, why not? <laughs> Fuck it. Actually, no, that's how I proposed to her. I was like trying to say something. Like, I was like, duh, 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 fuck it. Will you marry me? Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck it. It was very romantic and sweet. For some reason, that sounded very erotic. Mm-hmm. We'll form into a battle stream behind the rocket. Keep your head down. Keep your head down. <laughs> These guys look like something out of like a. 90s or 80s Japanese manga. Manga. Uh, manga. 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 No, no, wait. This, manga. This, the symbol that's on Flash's chest, mm-hmm. I think, is the same symbol on her head. Okay. Oh, is it on his head, too? <laughs> no, he has a different... No, his thing looks like a sheriff's stuff. Yeah. This does remind me of the the Batman 60s show, just how he's describing it and all. It does sound like something like how West is, you know, going to solve the problems. Like, we're going to do this. And Uh, what is... But they actually got Queen to play the wedding. Yeah. Did you hear, uh, like, there was, like, a video going around of, like, a Batgirl from the Adam West show. Yeah. It's, like, they're talking about the wage gap of, like, 78%, like, women to men. And it, you know, it was recorded way back then, so it's like being used as this political thing, like, we well, haven't made any progress, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you, you, you bad guys better make merry, or else. <laughs> Under pain of, t- yeah. yeah. Pain of t- this is, I'm sorry, this is, this is Big Trouble in Little China. It is. Although. Well, which is better? Oh, Big Trouble in Little China. Okay, I felt Big Trouble. What's better, Tony? Oh, yeah. Big, Big Trouble. trouble. <laughs> Nothing against this movie, but yeah. you, as much as I enjoy this movie, you—it's hard for me to ever go against John Carpenter. 
Especially when he's especially when he's tall, smaller. Wait, what's this? Wait, 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 what? Huh? You guys don't know the story with John Carpenter and Schmiller? No. No. Um, the Student Academy Awards came up, and Schmiller came second, and John Carpenter came first, and. Uh, the Academy Awards? Uh, student, 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 student Academy, Academy Awards. Oh, that is true. I remember that. And so he's always been like, I, like I don't know. It's just kind of like you gotta like get this feeling like, oh, that could have been me. Like every oh, time, God. you know, he teaches the horror class and everything, you know. You know. Especially but when he I, shows Halloween, he's probably like, in his nice ways, like, I'm gonna get you, you son of a bitch. Well, I but, mean, like Schmoller did do Puppet Master, which, yeah. which is great. Oh, and I, I, I talked to him about Puppet Master, and he was just like, oh, I don't know about that. Especially saying, oh, the visual effects are terrible. And I was like, no, the visual effects are good. That's how Schmoller is, though. Schmoller's very much like Craig Boydson. I don't know if you know Craig, but like, he's always like and, talking down about his work. And that's the but, thing about Schmoller. It's like, I want to give... He I'm, was always a nice guy. Uh, he was a, to me. And I just want to give him a big hug and say, no, you, and you've done good. I, I don't know if you say, um... Schmoller might be a little bit happy or is, because from what I understand about a Carpenter, he's like lost all interest in filmmaking. Yeah, he just wants to get stoned and play Xbox. Yeah, that's 100%. All he does is smoke pot, go to conventions, and play video games. Because he's just kind of burnt out. He, like, Hollywood burnt him out. Well, that's what happened with Schmoller. He got screwed, too. He, he had to... He gave up his sequel rights to all the Puppet Master movies, otherwise he'd be oh, living in a huge oh, house. that guy, because he's dealing with Charles Band. That guy's a prick, I know. It's like, there's so many stories about all these filmmakers getting screwed over by that guy. I mean, and, okay, now, you know, I've been, I've said my things about Menendez and London and everybody all that. that. Everybody, that like, anyone. Yeah, yeah, but bear in mind, he's like, Charles Band is a jerk. Pure freaking jerk. <laughs> he really believed that line. Jesus Christ. Wait, one kills them all. Is it Jesus that Christ, that was going to give me yeah. nightmares. No, no, what we just saw there, wasn't that something that would happen during a Hart Wegner class? Oh, I kid Hart Wegner. Hey, I love Nathan's him. not here. He's the one who has a problem with Wegner. Yeah. I, I know, it's funny. I Christian, love me Christian some Christian loves Wegner. Wegner. It's I, funny because she hates, like, so much about, like, the whole, like, how everything was taught, you know, the, and all that stuff. Well, she did not, I, I take that back. She, yeah. she enjoyed it, but, like, she hated, I think she just didn't get enough guidance or something. Like, oh, that, that's a good point because, I mean, with Hard Fegner, when I went to his class, that I did learn something. And for exactly. me, I was encouraged. Yeah. By him to Because it's to a class learn. class, you know, it's the yeah. theory class that you all, feel like you're learning. So I'd like to know why they all melt. Wow. What's with all that black goo? Why isn't it sparkly green goo? Why is he dressed like Robin Hood? Like, Flash has changed like six times. Can this guy change once? Jesus, you're He's not going to change clothes until he's hired by MI6. Hmm. Right? Actually, that is, a, when you're talking about what she experienced, I mean, I have to admit there were times where I did feel that way, that it seems that a lot of of the teachers kind of had this little yeah. ego. Well, the favorites, but also had this ego, like I could have been this, I could have done that and feel like they're bashing other work as opposed to why don't we celebrate the art as a medium? What always, what always got me was, um, and I don't know if it was just because, um, no, I don't think it had anything to do with Clarence because Clarence wasn't, in the, it wasn't in the class the first time I heard this, but I always heard, uh, some of the teachers in advanced directing kind of, um, bash, Everything um, Die Hard after the first one. When it's when in my, for my money, like I never understood that because Die Hard with a Vengeance, I think is everybody as good as the first one. The second was just a remake of the first. Yeah, one. the second yeah. one's crappy. The but Die you get William Sadler's ass with a Die Hard with a Vengeance is everybody as good as the first one. And also, it felt like a lot, and I a lot, and I and to his credit, I don't remember. Um, uh, um, Tyler ever doing this, which is probably why Tyler is awesome. But it was during the time where everybody loved to give Ben. Oh God! And I remember like that happened so much in advanced directing. It's like shitting on shitting on Affleck, shitting on Affleck. Like, and I could just uh, sat there thinking, like, he's done good shit. He's done yeah. horrible stuff, but he's done good work. Yeah, he has. And hmm, he has two Academy Awards. Oh, on this his was before, shelf. no, this was before the Oscars. Well, no, 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 he, no, no it was he, after he, Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting, but before Argo. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it was the bit, like that J Lo thing still leaning. Oh over. God! Well, like Ben Affleck made a really good point. He said that like he would try to pick scripts that he wanted to be good that he thought he could make better, yeah. but like you know, it's like 
he realized that he just didn't have that that control as an actor, which is why he yeah. likes directing. Um, that's why I'm. That's why I really do have faith in uh, him being a good. Holy man. shit! Robin Hood is packing heat. One of the things though about like the film department, like they do pick favorites, and like I think the guidance has gotten a bit better because they. But you know it's tough when you have like one counselor for four hundred people. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but but the thing that like the reason why they're so tough, I think, is because it's like if you're gonna go to Hollywood and try to like do that stuff, and you get put off by like one of your professors being tough, you know, it's like gonna be you're gonna have a hard time. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm not ever off by anybody being tough because yeah, I think like I, I mean, like talking about Tyler, I think Tyler's tough, but he's extremely fair. Yes. And but the, the other thing I liked about Tyler was the, this whole, whole attitude of I don't give a shit. Looks like he got the point. I'm surprised nobody said that in this movie. I'm literally surprised nobody said that. Well, because you see, they're smart, and I'm an idiot. So, no, that would have worked in this movie. I honestly believe that. What's That's a little like ring goo. Is and he? I don't think he melts. He he melts over you, Cameron. Or aliens. It's like bent. <laughs> it's literally bent. Stop your attack on Earth and I'll spare your life. <laughs> Yet you're coming you're coming over to hack him. Yep. Well, he could have chopped his hand off. Oh look at that depth of field. Mm. That's like I I can't imagine Ming being done any other way. Like I've seen uh like people do animated adaptations of him and he looks as far away from this as they can get it because they think, oh, negative Asian stereotype. But I just like this I, look. But, and that, here's the thing. You know what? You want to know what comes into my head when I see him? I do not think Asian. I think Vulcan. That's a very good point. I think oh. Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm Asian too. <laughs> I mean, his name is Ming too, which is but, like just so freaking... Ming, like what, Ming, Ming Ching Chong? But I don't, but that's the thing. I I really do wonder if that was what uh, Raymond intended, like the creator of Ming, for him to be like this horrible Asian stereotype. He was just meant to be a conqueror. <laughs> Yay! Well, that was wait, simple. wait, awesome. <laughs> Flash this thing playing. I just noticed that Ming is dead. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Or is he? Spoiled it. And there's Riff Raff who's given nothing to do in this movie. That's disappointing. He's Riff Raff. That's enough. Vulcan? <laughs> That's exactly what I was before! Yay! Mongo? That's the name of the planet. You know, the planet that's made up of clouds and meteorites. Yeah. Mongo only pawn in Game of Life, Cameron. It's a message of... Oh, life. shit. Here comes Mongo. That should have been a line in the... If they ever made a Flash Gordon oh, issue, yeah, that should have been the like line. Evil chick now. Yeah. <laughs> they, get, they get back to Earth, and Never then Mongo, that Mongo shit. returns. Here comes Mongo! Yeah. Don't they shoot off fireworks or something? You know what this ending sequence really needs? Yubna. Oh, this. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this ending sequence really needs Yubna playing. Wait, do they spell Flash? Yes. Yeah, they spell it Flash. <laughs> it's cheesy, but it's cute. It works. Yeah. Because of the tone of the movie. Like, oh, you. And this, of course, because Dino De Laurentiis wanted... See, that's why when people get mad at movies oh, like that? The Prince of Persia... It's like, I'm like, it's the Prince of Persia. Yeah. Yub nub. Dee da yub nub. Alright, it's on Electric Records. Let's go buy some shit. Alright, Flash Gordon. Uh, Cameron? Fun, fun camp fest. It's worth it. Tony? It's fun. It's a, if you can, if you can enjoy it, I'd watch it, yeah. It's, it's a... It's a silly, campy romp. It that is. That makes David remember how much he hates people. Oh. The only person I dislike is Charles Band, and that's because he's actively destroying people's dreams. But if I do see Francisco Menendez, I will take his glasses. <sighs> Just for a second. 
And then I'll flip them off and say how many can fingers am I holding up. You get restraining orders in the mail, right? What's yeah. funny is I'm going to try to arrange like a meeting now and yeah. like, with David there, and David's going to just be like, oh, here, Francisco. <laughs> yeah, for most likely, I'd be like, oh, no. Hard to walks away. You're going to be like, you're gonna be like, hey, Francisco, I did this commentary. Want to hear it? Oh, you're yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I already heard it. It was already brought yeah, to my uh, attention. Yeah, you heard it? Yeah. Yeah, I already heard um, it. I heard it. Um, it was funny. It was insulting, but it was funny. Um, redo the commentary, or um, I'm going to have to sue you. Or I'm going to have to flag you. Yeah. Or I'm going I'm to have sex with you. What? what? Whoa! <laughs> How Wait, I, is you really should have held all this hatred in until no, Keenan showed up. No, I, sw I don't hate Menendez. I really don't. Just bothered by that one thing. So, when it comes to the remake of this movie... I am I want to see it, but I kind of hope it's fun. I don't know how they will do it. Well, that's the thing. It's not going to... It's unfair to call it a remake. It's I like think. a Conan remake. It's a because, thing altogether. Because if we're going to call this a remake, does that mean Batman Begins is a remake of Burton's? That's a good yeah. point. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when Batman Begins came Reboot. out. I had I had a friend who was saying, Reboot. "How can the how can this be Batman Year One?" And we I mean everyone knows the Joker killed Batman. Oh God, you have no idea how many people were saying they were they were getting confused over. Oh, it. I totally thought that for a long time until I started reading the comics. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Robbie Coltrane was in this movie. It's not like what Robbie Hagrid Coltrane. He probably just had a, a bit. Yeah, it was a bit part. And it's Deep Roy. Yeah, it was Roy. Why is he called Deep Roy? George Harris. Because he's Indian? No, but like... So what? what is that? Just like the Americanized version of his name? Michelle. Uh, like, is his, like is his name actually... That I don't know. Like is his name actually something that would be like Deep Roy? Or something like that? I think that might, his name might just be Deep Roy. Sand Moon Girls. Cyclorian the Aquarian Girls. girls. The, aqu the Aquarian Girls. Isn't your, girl. isn't your girlfriend an Aquarian Girl? I have no idea. Oh, what it is. and the dwarves, um, Malcolm Dixon, Tiny Ross, and Mike Edmonds would, and Kenny Baker. I mean, Kenny Baker it's and hard Mike to. and yeah, and Mike Edmonds was the tail of Jabba, and those four dwarves were Ewoks? in Time Bandits. Oh, okay. How do you even know this? My God, I love Time Bandits, and it's I mean, like, you have you seen that movie? With You're all like the dwarves? thinking about the extras right now, like. <laughs> but I know them by name. It's like, cause let me think. What are the dwarves? Let me think. I can. Feely, Keely, Balan, no, no, Dwalin. No. Jesus. No. no, I was referring to like Time Bandits. Dopey. There is like what? The only one whose name I can't recall was the one who killed himself, unfortunately. But I know Malcolm Dixon, Tiny Ross, Mike Edmonds, Jack Purvis. Yes, that is his name. And Kenny Baker. Jack Purvis. His name's Jack Purvis. And you know him because. Did you see Baron Munchausen? The Adventures of Baron Munchausen? When I was a kid. Maybe. He was the dwarf with the big ears and he could blow things away. He was also in Brazil. He was the little, oh, okay. um, the, the, the plastic surgeon. Okay. Who used the acid man. The acid man. Yep. So, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to end uh, an episode of The Commentators. Yeah. Yes, Quite it is. interesting. It was. Mm -hmm. I hope Tony comes back in the future. Um. Uh, let everyone know we are going to be taking a break next week because mm -hmm. Cameron is going to... Where is he going? Wizard World. That's right. There's a Comic-Con. Unfortunately, Paige isn't going to yes, be there. Yes, Paige from WWE had to cancel because she's filming a WWE movie. Sure she is. No, I mean, you know, it's, you don't, it sounds pretty bad. Yes. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we don't know what the next film is going to be. It's going to be a surprise. Would it be Nathan's choice at this point? It will be Nathan's okay. choice. But I don't know what he's going to... He's, he's going to bring back something something sexy. Maybe Bob the Clown Marathon. Who knows? Where he'd probably be like, oh my god, why did I do that? Oh, oh Jesus um, Christ. Tony's right here. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's Nathan criticizing himself. Oh my himself. god, that writer room was something else. Let me yeah, I'm still that. disappointed that some of those ideas didn't work <laughs> for a oh second season. Oh my god, there's some, some messed up stuff. Like, the first episode, I think there's a, like, a hang he gives, like... This girl, he knocks up a hanger for. Oh, yeah. God. And, like, and, I remember I wrote the. I remember I, I remember I think I sent you the episode I wrote for Bob the Clown. Everyone do, do oh was that, which was the Christmas episode, where yeah. Bob is essentially sexually assaulted by an elderly maid. Oh my yeah. God! I well, know. you know what's funny is you were the only person to send me stuff. Like I have like one or two other people who were like sending mm. me ideas for it, and I was like, oh my God, I wish I had money to make this stuff. Mm. 
But I, I think we should stop because yeah. I don't want to spoil this Bob the Clown stuff. But yeah, give me money, okay. I'll make a season two. Yeah. Uh well, um, this is David. This is Cameron. This is Tony. And adios, flash. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.